Look at that nice art. Good art. Good art. Thank you. Come on, guys. Yeah. Make me happy. Uh, <laughs> it is beautiful. Thank you so much for that artwork, Tin. Anyway, we're starting on time. We said 3 o'clock. We start at 3 o'clock. So welcome, everybody, to the Happiness Happens Meetup. This is the Happiness, Happiness for Humanists. Humanists. Yeah, sponsored by it and explain. Yes, Humanist International has been helping us out and sponsoring our activities and events for quite some time now. This is another such cafe humanist that they are helping us to organize and host. We will get on to the topics in a bit, but first some ground rules. So listen to whoever is talking and listen to sincerely respond and not just to try to counter whatever is being said. Uh, respect everyone and cue yourselves if you want to speak, raise your hands physically through the webcam or virtually through the feature. If you I don't will, know how. I will put the, the cue on the chat. Yeah. So we will start with the introductions and questions of the week. So I am Red. I am a free thinker, stoic, pescatarian. The question of the week for this week is, what was or what has been an unexpected source of happiness for you during the pandemic? And an, an optional question that you can answer is, what has let you down? So what has not given you as much happiness as you had expected during the pandemic? So you're free to answer one or both or neither if you feel like just introducing yourself. So my answer to the question of the week, what's been an unexpected source of happiness, I would say exercise. I think exercise, like the daily routine that I've started, has uh, helped me anchor with a, with a certain schedule every day. I think my energy levels are um, high because of the exercise. When I don't get to exercise, I am not as, um, yeah, my mood is not as good as when I do. So, Tin, go ahead. Um, sing it lang din. Um, you can go to slido.com and share with us your feelings for today. How are you feeling? And um, what brings me happiness lately is food and plants. <laughs> yeah. So I, oh, I, wait. Unexpectedly? Did you not expect that kind of happiness coming from the, from the food and the plants? Okay. Sorry. Wala. Wala. Wala nang happiness sa buhay ko. <laughs> Wala, wala, wala. I, I don't have any unexpected happiness. Ah, uh, okay. That's okay then. Food is fine. Yeah, I'm pretty predictable. So, yes, food and plants make me happy. Okay. Uh, JL. Uh, so, hi, JL. I'm an atheist. Um, unexpected things that mean probably happiness. Um, oh, learning how to cut my own hair. <laughs> oh, really? You did that, yeah. uh, like this one right now is your doing. Congratulations yeah, on that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's, I don't really have anything that's disappointed in my internet. Internet's disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Especially internet has let you down. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess that's it for me. Yeah. Screw you, Converge. Thank you, JL. And uh, Jesse, Ernest. Okay. Um, unexpected happiness. Maybe I would say when I fired myself from my employer <laughs> just recently. Sorry, what was that? I, I filed my resignation with my boss. Oh, that unexpected you unexpectedly gave you happiness. Yeah, it's actually a happy, uh, it's 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 something that brings really enthusiasm for me. Especially, I'm a dad right now. I managed to have a quality time with my family, especially with my son and my wife. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, good to hear that, uh, Ernest, and nice to see you again. Um, Tony, welcome back after um, decades of not seeing you. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you all. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I'm Tony. Uh, my unexpected happiness, I, I think, Similar to Reds, I began exercising because I I wasn't able to go out more often. So I lost my my only exercise, which is uh, my eight eight thousand to ten thousand steps a day. So, wow! Yeah, 
So, so what exercise are you doing, Tony? Oh, I finally am able to use this. Nice. <laughs> Dumbbells. Very nice. And Thank you. At Amazon. Oh, what is that? It's it's, oh, you put the thing onto the slots and you yeah, do... Like this. Yeah. Yeah, we have something similar. Somebody stole it recently, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank Frank, you. okay. <laughs> Frank stole it. <laughs> okay. On, uh, thank you so much, Tony, for sharing that. Belated happy birthday. Frank, go ahead. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? I don't yeah. Know yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no other expected source of happiness. Uh, Frank, in love. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Melissa, go ahead. Hi, I'm Melissa, and unexpected happiness. Coloring my hair is really, really fun. Yay. Yeah, you do it yourself, <laughs> just by yourself. Yeah, by two mirrors, one at the front and one at the back. And oh. uh, yeah, it's really fun. Nice. I'm actually Great. planning my next hair color. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, thank you for sharing that, Melissa. And for those of you who haven't uh, heard the question of the week, it's um, what has been an unexpected source of happiness for you during the pandemic? Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that. Um, Bea, go ahead. Is Bea here? Yeah, yeah, but I can't hear her. You have to un unmute, unmute first. Okay. There you go. Hello. Oh, yeah, Hi. Uh, so I'm Bea. Um, I'm an atheist. I um one unexpected source of happiness over the past week. Although this is a kind of an annoying answer. <laughs> um, work. Um, I know that that's not like it's kind of contradictory because I complain. Like they know this. I've been complaining about being busy, but also a source of happiness because um, this is, so I'm a, I'm a teacher, um, we start classes in two weeks, so we were, we've been um, given the task of preparing so that, parang, we're, right now we're at the stage where we have to prepare everything, all the materials, so that ideally, like, even students who can't, like, attend classes online will be able to, like, just ship them all the materials. So, but I've been in this process of like picking out articles for them to read and um, designing activities, and it's fun for me. It's a lot of time and it's busy. It's a lot of work, pero na I enjoy ko siya. And I kind of like the fact na parang well, like there's nothing else I am doing anyway, so like I can really immerse myself. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice to hear that. And we are also very lucky that Bea will uh, display to us some of that teaching and facilitating skill. No. Uh, the first topic <laughs> will be facilitated by Bea. Thank you so much for that. And on to Jed. Jed. Hello. Go okay. ahead. Hello. Uh, okay. Unexpected happiness uh, during this pandemic, maybe watching and playing horror games. Yeah. <laughs> Horror games. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jed. Nice to see you again. Um, you too. Doc, Doc Margie, nice to see you. Hi. Oh, but you are muted, so you... Uh, oh, let, can you... I just want to say I'm very happy to be here. I will mute again because I'm very noisy. And the major reason I came here was to listen and learn from Bea. Yay. Okay, I'm muting... Oh, wait, but um, you want to answer the question of the week? What has been an unexpected source of happiness for you <laughs> during this pandemic? Oh, ah, I was able to eat six kilos of mangosteen this week. Ah, it's mangosteen season. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Maybe I can eat more. Okay, muting <laughs> now. Thank you. And I'm we are so happy to be here. I just want you to know I am so, so happy to be here. And we're so happy to, to have you. Uh, this is, of course, a mental health uh, meetup. And we have many psychologists uh, in, the, in the group. This is the biggest group of psychologists we've ever had at a, at a single meetup. So we will break records. Um, and of course, our, our guest speaker, Chris Karandang, is also in the room already. I'm very excited to hear uh, his talk later. Do look forward to that. 
Um, but let's go on with the introductions. Mech, go ahead. Oh, um, Mech said she ha might have internet problems. So okay, Mel. Mel, you wanna you wanna share? Um, is it coffee? <laughs> okay, maybe not. Okay, Who we'll we'll. Okay, Mel. Yeah, we. I'm hearing Mel now. Okay. Hi, Mel. Hi, I, I expected I had plenty of time learning um, video editing. <laughs> mm. so, video editing, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I suppose yeah. a lot of people are learning new skills. Thank you. Yep. Okay, and of course, coffee. Um, are you editing coffee videos, Mel? I'm actually trying to make some um, uh, video materials about coffee science, uh, short, short videos. Yeah, actually, why don't we have a coffee meetup? Yeah, like I, I bet a lot of people here are interested in such yeah, a thing. Let's like do how, a coffee science meetup. How to optimize your three in one taste? That would be an interesting <laughs> topic. Um, thank you so much, Mel. Nice to have you. And Jan, yeah, Jan, go ahead. Uh, Jan has mic problems, so oh, Johan introduce himself in the chat. Talgona. <laughs> yeah, I've, I learned uh, how to, to make those Talgona stuff. But anyway, Johan, go ahead. Oh, just chatting today for Jan. Maybe Johan is also just chatting for today. Um, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, Chris, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, agreeing to be here. Welcome, Hello. Chris. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. Christine and Red, I'm very, I'm very happy to be uh, here and to be invited to share some of my experiences. Um, am I supposed to answer the question, Ren? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, I have, I feel like I've adapted well to working from home, and I actually enjoy the fact that I don't have to go through traffic. That's one, and that when I'm done with work. Uh, I'm with my family right away, and uh, this gives me more time to play with my four-year-old daughter. And uh, maybe I'll share a bit more later about that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, looking Thank forward you. to Thank hearing you. that. And, and this, uh, this talk of Chris is around 4.30, so do stick around for that. Um, we have a bunch of other topics lined up before that, though. So, yep, uh, stick around. And Roy. And Roy, you want to share with us um, a, a brief intro and uh, your answer to the question of the week. Okay, we will skip. Oh, um, there. Go ahead. Hello. hello. Hi. Um, hello, my name is Anne, or Anne Roy, and I'm also a new atheist. <laughs> and <Huh? laughs> um, um, uh, my, quest, my answer to the question for the week is, unexpected happiness is I I just recently joined some new atheist groups and um, there's one per random person just chatted me and added me to a group chat and they were very welcoming so yeah nice nice good to hear that um, yep thank you so much for sharing and welcome to uh, is this one such group that you recently joined after becoming an atheist and Roy um uh patas okay patas yeah. yeah be sure be sure to check out philippine atheists as well if you can find that uh the the founder is with us today tony basa you can see him here so that's also a very accommodating bunch of people so yeah check that out roy roy bautista Okay. What uh, about we will, we will skip you for now, Roy. Um, if you get your mic to work, we will get back to you. Um, Katrina. Oh, Katrina doesn't want to uh, okay. talk for now. She's going to listen. No worries. Danny. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> um, so what were the questions today? Sorry, I just got in. What's an unexpected source of happiness for you during these past six months? Wow, it's been six months already. Can everybody believe that? Anyway, Danny. 
Oh God, it's been six months. <laughs> I'm... Jesus. Um, unexpected, an unexpected happiness, I suppose, would be. I guess this is part of like be, uh, working in a privileged sector, but I've had two COVID tests in the past six months, and both turned out negative. Company sponsored. Oh, great! Yay. Yeah. Good for you then. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Nice to have you here. Um, who else? Joseph. Joseph is just. Um, and Joseph is the last one before well, we jump in. Well, people are um, answering the question. I'm going to um, do the poll for what you identify as. Okay. So let's start with the poll here. What do you identify as? It's multiple choice, and I believe you can answer more than one if it's a part of your identity. Um, but <laughs> please, please try to avoid the atheist, theist answer. That's kind of a troll answer. <laughs> so, so atheist, uh, yeah, yeah. Feel free to keep answering what applies to you. And um, the answer before the none of the above one, ayetsist, it's a popular one actually. Um, but if you don't know what it means, ayetsist means someone who believes that there's a higher power. Um, not sure about what that higher power actually is or any details about, about that, but you know they feel that there's a higher power. So that's an ayetsist. Today I learned. Anyway, submit your answers, Tin. Yeah. And who is next in the introductions? I was waiting for Joseph, but he's still connecting to audio, I see. So that's okay. Uh, that's it for the introductions for now. I posted and, the topics in the chat. Mm -hmm. And because this is a happiness happens meetup, we will skip the usual talking about the news from around the world. <laughs> So that, yeah, we'll, we're uh, at an above average level of happiness throughout the, the three hours that we're together. Um, so I, I promised you that the first topic will be facilitated by our guest facilitator, Bea Torre. So Bea, take it away. No, oh, sorry, this is wrong, Tin. You posted a different order than what we had uh, recently yeah. What does happiness mean for free thinkers? So what does happiness mean for you here? Or what does happiness mean for you if you don't happen to identify as a free thinker? Anyway, Bea, that's the, that's the topic. Go ahead. Um, is everyone okay to... Oh. Sorry, we're, we're talking about the first topic, guys. Um, yung science of happiness and mental health. Hello. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. Um, we, we recently changed the order a bit, like making the definition of happiness first because it made sense to do it like that um, before we get into, you know, what the science say about happiness. Like, what does happiness mean in the first place? So we, we thought oh. that would make sense as a sequence. Okay. You can also answer on Slido what happiness is for you. more um, prepared for the first, for the original first topic of like the science of happiness and mental health. Um, so the, for, the, Okay, the, okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry about that. There was a, a bit of a miscommunication perhaps between um, Tin and I. Uh, no problem. Okay, we will get back to the science of happiness then. We, we can, of course, co-facilitate this with you and Tin and yeah, so I guess the, the first order of business then is for everyone to visit slido.com, put in the room code 11555, and then, yeah, just type in the, the words that you associate with, with happiness. The poll results are in, I think. 
Is this displayed for everyone, Tin? Uh, yes. Okay, so it says here that 61% um, identify as atheist, followed by agnostic, humanist, secular, apatheist. Great. Okay, and now on to the, the Slido then. Uh, let's give people some time to um, put in their answers there. So you can, of course, put in as many keywords as you like, but I guess one word at a time, right, Tin? Uh, you can give as much as you want. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I'm looking at the, are you displaying the results? Yes. Oh, yeah, there, there it is. Food. Food is a... Oh, is there's there purpose naman. <laughs> Hindi yeah. lang food, food. Okay. Food, purpose, fulfillment, ease, comfort, peace of mind. Very good answers in here. Okay. So let's hear then from the people, from, from the room, just getting a... a a feel of what happiness entails for the people here in the, the room. So everyone who wants to answer, just raise your hands. Um, randomly, I can call out people who I know. Tony, what does happiness mean for you as a free thinker, as a atheist? How do you define happiness? Happiness, right? Mm. It's... Um... For me, it's uh, being true to yourself. Integrity. Being true to yourself is what happiness means for you. You okay, don't that... have to lie to yourself. Just be yourself. Just being yourself. Yeah, that, that freedom is uh, certainly something that's good for well-being. A lot of people probably have to pretend because of the circumstances they're in. And being a humanist, being a non-religious person in a country full of believers and where Displaying your belief is often part of the culture, I guess. Uh, you, you live in Japan, by the way, for the benefit of the people who are not familiar with Tony. Tony lives in Japan, a very atheistic country. Yeah, here you, you take it for granted. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. so very interesting um, contrast in situations that we have, the Japan and the Philippines. Anyone else want to give an answer? What about you, Danny? What does happiness mean for you? I'd say it's a bit like what Tony said, being true to uh, being true to yourself, but at the but at the same but at the same time finding some sort of like purpose to what is going on in your life, like finding a. It sounds cheesy, but finding your niche, a space where you belong and where you can be that self. Yeah, like uh, finding a place where you belong. Isn't that a GMA thing? I, I <laughs> or, or was that an ABS? I think GMA, yeah, like where you belong. But um, jokes aside, that is definitely true. We are tribal creatures, human beings, and our belonging to the tribe is very important to us. So I, I suppose that's definitely the case, happiness is cat licking Frank. Sorry, what is an apatheist? So just to answer a question in the chat, an apatheist is someone who doesn't really care too much about the question of whether God exists. So someone who hasn't even considered it or who does not like to consider it for, for whatever reason, they can identify as an apatheist. So I feel that it, like that question Yes, it's coming from apathy. I do not care about the question of whether God exists. So that's an apatheist. And we seem to have um, a few apatheists in the group. Okay. Uh, other participants, are there other people raising their hands, Tin? And, and before we pass it on to someone else, Tin, what does happiness mean for you? For me, Max and Pepper. The, yeah, our dog -ters. Yes, yeah, so right pepper. now we have a war in the word cloud of dogs and cats. Mas nananalo yung dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Cake is winning, actually. Cake is winning. <laughs> yeah. Cake is better than dogs or cats. Yeah, so so I suppose more dog people in the in the room right now. Um, serotonin. That's a very interesting answer. Technically, technically correct. Uh, yeah. But of course, like, like there are people who think of happiness as more of a feeling. And there are 
also people who think of happiness as more of a state of mind. So there doesn't have to be uh, a feeling of strong joy or emotion, you know, like a uh, quiet contentment can be happiness to some. Or meaning, did, did anyone put meaning in the Slido? So meaning, meaning and purpose. Meaning, okay, there, there it is. They're together, you're right. In meaning and purpose. So you might not be like the boisterous kind of laughing and smiling all the time, but uh, as long as you're meaning. And of course, um, it's very interesting for us, uh, for free thinkers to define like how they're supposed to live their lives because we're not following the usual um, scripts that uh, religious people are often uh, following. Anyone else have an answer for the question of what happiness means for you? So what what is a so as we are free thinkers here, what is a definition of happiness that society usually prescribes that you do not subscribe to? Well, that's another question there. So we are uh, usually contrarian folks. We definitely do not accept the mainstream definitions of things. So what is a definition of happiness that society kind of pushes on people that you do not subscribe to? Anyone want to so, answer that? Okay, Danny's raising her hand. Did Melissa raise her hand too? Yes, yes. Okay, Let's Melissa finish. Melissa first. Go ahead, Melissa. Yeah, they said uh, happiness uh, will follow marriage. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they said. <laughs> that's wait. That's definitely correct. Then, like, I was not very happy until I married you. Okay, moving on. Why is uh, it the other way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm kidding. Ob obligatory pandering to the wife. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for for that. Um, Danny, what, what are others? Uh, so marriage is one. Marriage is something follow, that, um, yeah, Danny, go ahead. To follow what Melissa said, having children. Having children. Okay, marriage so. and like the combination of marriage and having children. A lot, of right. people, a lot of people prescribe for women that you marry, you have children, you'll be happy. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Tin, you want to you wanna plug the free thinker feminist group? Oh, um, well, if you are, if you um, consider yourself to be a, a woman or a non-binary person, uh, please join Filipino free thinkers women's group. Yeah, so it's a women, women X meetup that uh, Tin facilitates and it's very fun and they discuss a lot of things um, such as the the right to decide for yourself what happiness means for you even if it's independent of having kids and a partner okay other other answers in the room what uh, what about um success like money or fame or reputation and stuff like that because that's uh, certainly something that we are told by the advertisements what Walang money dun sa word cloud pero may ano may new games you buy <laughs> So priorities, Deba. You need money so that you can buy games. Yeah. And maybe, uh, yeah, that's something that will be part of Bea's discussion coming up very, very soon about uh, the studies, you know, what it, what it takes to be happy, like how much money actually factors into that and so on. Looking forward to that. Um, other uh, definitions or misconceptions about happiness? Okay, final question for this topic before we switch to the one facilitated by Bea on the science of happiness. Like, how has your definition of happiness changed over the years? Like, what's the drastic change that happened for you? Like, maybe you had a different idea. Like, uh, I'll give an example. I definitely thought money was the most important thing. Having graduated from high school, I made my choice of college course based on that idea that I wanted to make the most money. Like, that was definitely the key to all happiness and so on. And now that's still the case. I'm kidding. Uh, it's changed a lot. It's uh, it's marriage now. Marriage is happiness for me. Okay, <laughs> obligatory, obligatory pandering to the wife again. Uh, but anyway, yeah, money is no longer for me uh, a necessary condition of happiness. That being said, I recognize the privilege of being able to say that. Right? It would definitely be like a different 
situation for for us if we don't have money and if you can't buy the basic necessities food shelter and so on like like uh yeah that would be very very difficult so happy uh, i mean money does contribute to well-being but if that's a necessity like it of course depends on the individual um other people who have changed their minds no money equals an happiness okay that's that said you know like i said there are people who have very little yet they're very happy and i'm reminded um meaning and purpose was mentioned here victor frankl's book what's the what's the call what's the book meaning um search man's search for meaning that's it man's search for meaning so even in the most dire circumstances um, we are meaning making machines and human beings can certainly like make uh happiness happen there okay who else um, wants to give an answer to that question or has happiness mo uh, pretty much stayed the same for you the definition at least and i will randomly call a person i know um, I think, um ernest and jed want to talk oh there it is okay ernest jed go ahead uh, for me uh, change uh, my point of view of in terms of happiness has changed for the past uh, few years especially when i got married uh, before, I used to enjoy things, especially like travel alone, go to different places alone, or sometimes go to trip abroad. And then, the moment I, uh, I got married, the, I, I found my contentment. The moment I see, uh, let me introduce my son. Yay! His name is Ernst Kaiser. He's my baby. Hello! Hello. Hi! Hi! Say good morning. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, every time, uh, it is actually the consolation, the, the, the price of um, firing myself away from my work. Uh, this is the happiness that I have because each, each, time, each morning I wake up, I see my son waking me up like this, slapping my face left and right. Or sometimes he, he will just like say, da, 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 or sometimes he will imitate something mimic anyone else he saw on TV or everybody. So basically, this is the, the real price for me, not just about money. And it says yes. <laughs> yeah. I see, I see in the word cloud, loving and feeling loved. So that's certainly oxytocin. Um, who's, the, who's the next person who is going to give an answer? <laughs> Jed. Uh, yeah. Me, uh... When I was, I think around elementary, it was sort of, you know, the, the honor and the, when things are in order, I'm happy when I get some, if you're good in class or if people praise you, you know, uh, that, that's, that used to be the, the happiness for me. But when I was growing up, it's sort of more like freedom. If I can read what I want, uh, watch what I want, and I can study what I want, you know, that the definition of happiness uh, uh, changed from in, into something like that. And now I no longer care about the, you know, those honors or when people praise you. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it means it doesn't mean much now. It's all about the likes now, yeah? yeah. No, I'm kidding. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, who could have imagined, like, like uh, the millennials especially, when we were in school, that likes and shares and, and such things would be such a driver of happiness for a lot of people. Anyway, Puppy's tentative name is Momo. Nice. Um, and with that, any final words for the people here? We purposely did not... Uh, discuss a technical definition of happiness, I will pass that duty on to Bea. And with that, uh, everybody give a round of applause, virtual or actual, for Bea, yay! Take it away, Bea. And also a round of applause for Cake, because Cake won. <laughs> wow, yes! I strongly agree with this definition of happiness. <laughs> My puppy is joining us because puppies are also happiness. <laughs> hey. I will have to set them aside. Okay. Um, so, actually, the, the, some of the answers that people mentioned are kind of related to some of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, are people okay with doing like a quick 
uh, activity, discussion type thing. I think Frank entered his answer na earlier in the chat. But anyway, the first question was just um, to write your thoughts on six things. So it's children, wealth, love, fulfilling career, marriage, and sex. Um, hmm. So you don't have to like write a whole essay. Uh, maybe just one of the first few things that come to mind. Um, Frank wrote earlier, I think I caught uh, Frank writing, children are expensive. <laughs> so Jail's answers are, I see five answers. So no, I'm guessing no is about children. <laughs> um, uh, related to wealth, uh, eat the rich. <laughs> So definitely not something maybe super um, essential for JL for happiness. Great to have. I'm not sure if you're referring to love or for fulfilling career. Maybe both. Because I'm guessing the next no is also about marriage. And then the last yes is probably about sex. Um, Jed says, cute but stressful. I'm guessing about children. And need for survival. Adorable. <laughs> Fifth answer is children are noisy. Wealth is... Something you want, not of just enough of to live how you want to live. Yeah. Um, love is something that you can get from all kinds of relationships, um, not just romantic, but also family and friends. Fulfilling career. Um, so, Tim's answers, I think, are pointing out that fulfillment can come from hobbies, not just from your work that you're paid to do, uh, which is a great point. Uh, marriage, not necessary. And sex, I am a plant. Which can also be a hobby. <laughs> um, Red says, children shouldn't be the norm. Well, um, I, I'm guessing because Red is bringing up the topic of universal basic income, um, which challenges the idea that any one person should be able to accumulate a large amount of wealth, right? Um, so parang with Red's answer, I'm guessing that He's more in favor of people having more or less similar amounts of uh, wealth or resources. Um, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. Thank you guys. <laughs> and then, Red's answers about marriage and sex are always about sin. <laughs> children are tiny people. People have mixed feelings about children. Love is feared. Wealth should have a limit. A fulfilling career is nice. Love is necessary but complicated. Uh, Frank, um, again, with the children, he says there are too many. Wealth is society. Ah, okay. So wealth, uh, Frank believes that wealth contributes to happiness uh, at a societal level, not a personal level. Um, love, uh, Frank, is, uh, Frank emphasizes self-love. Um, fulfillment <laughs> can be found from food. Um, and Frank answers about career. He mentioned that it's not out of need for money. So that's something that maybe we can also bring up later on. Marriage is something that's optional and that maybe should not be permanently binding. And sex whenever possible. <laughs> Melissa added marriage, you And sex, stress reliever. Jamie, um, children as long as they're not mine. I love that. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. Well, yeah. I, don't, I won't mind, but I want to at least provide my needs and wants. Love if it comes. Fulfilling career, please. Marriage, eh, and <laughs> sex, uh, potato. <laughs> um, yeah, potato. so there are some. Potatoes are also a source of happiness, I believe. Um, okay, so a lot of similar answers here. Like, I think most people in the group um, do not see any single one of these things as like the, the uh, end all and be all like source of happiness. Um, a lot of people ex are expressing kind of mixed feelings about all of these things, um, including the things that uh, people often say or society often tells us are the keys to happiness. Uh, so like Red mentioned earlier na in our society, we're often told that to be happy, you have to have kids. Um, and I think uh, Melissa 
and Danny also mentioned those things. But we're seeing in the chat that um, a lot of people in this room completely agree to that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you my next question. So out of those six things, children, wealth, love, fulfilling career, marriage, sex, the universe has decreed that you can only have three in your life. So you have to remove three out of the six. Which three remain? So again, it's children. I wait. It's children, wealth, love, fulfilling career, marriage, and sex. So out of the six, okay. So JL is keeping love, career, and sex. Um, Josephine, children, love, and wealth. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Interesting. Is it okay if I call out a few people to like tell us a bit more about their answers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I'm curious about John Lee's answer. So Georgie mentioned that she would keep children, love, and well. Uh, Georgie, can you tell us a bit about why three? Sorry, I'm in the dark. <laughs> I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll not no put my video on. Because children, because, simply because uh, I've gotten to really enjoy motherhood, which I really did not expect. So totoo lang, like, when before I became a mom, I thought I'd make a horrific mom and I didn't even want to be a mom. But when I got Kyle, it just turned my life around. So to me, children really provide a purpose in an otherwise, uh, parang sometimes meaningless world. Alam mo yon, it's like the world can be cruel, the world can seem meaningless, struggle could seem futile. But with children, it changed that for me. So, love, because again, love kind of like provides meaning for a lot of things. Saying it, okay, yung, yung sex without love seems pretty hollow and empty. I mean, it doesn't, even the fun is stripped of it. Kung wala malang kahit wanting love. So, I, <laughs> I just got it. That's, that's the funny thing that I've discovered about Mina. If I don't at least mildly love or love the person, it just doesn't happen for me. So although I've been a serial monogamist of sorts, uh, I kind of know what kind of the turn. So okay na rin sa akin na walang sex. Basta I love that person. That kind of like turns me on. Good na yun. Okay. And wealth because um, our mobility, uh, the things that we can do depend so much on resources. So it's never wealth for wealth sakes or status sake. But I kind of understand that if you want to go from A to B to C to D, and even just to survive and keep the people that mean a lot to us safe, it requires quite a bit of wealth. I mean, if the pandemic has not highlighted that at this point, I don't, I don't know uh, when it will. Yun. So, uh, what I'm hearing from you is that you, well, you, you included wealth, but you don't necessarily mean like huge amounts of money and resources, but just like that's Yeah, pero kasi the reason that I want wealth is because wealth really does corner power. I feel I'll be more responsible if I had it. So I mm -hmm. understand what wealth means. It's not just me, but if I have wealth, I get to influence a lot of uh, things in terms of how it affects other people, my community in that way, which is kind of sad. That's why I feel sometimes sad when it's the people who shouldn't be handing wealth that get wealthy because the path to wealth happens to be a very like a uh, lacking in integrity one and unprincipled one sometimes. I kind of like, I'm not happy that it's the people who shouldn't really be parents, not bettering the way the, 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 our fellowship as humans that have children 
kasi then they, they raise children that don't really improve on how um, a better world, uh, on, on us having a better world, parang ganon. So I do really mean wealth. Like if I could be Jeff Bezos, that would be great. I'd like to change the world. Yeah. Um, and I think what you mean, parang what you're saying is that wealth is important, because, not just in terms of like material resources, but because of the power no. and status. Uh, because of the power. It's, it's not even about, personally for me, it's because of the power you can wield and your ability to change the world around you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you believe that um, you would be able to change the world in such a way that more people would be living happier lives and more yes. decent lives. Because I detest uh, suffering. But because the problem with humanists, and I think it's a humanist thing, that our, it's not our own suffering that we're concerned about. Lang. It's the suffering of everything around us. When they suffer, we suffer. And that's why I've been quiet even on social media because of the news of a lot of suffering because of the pandemic, because people are going hungry, because people are just suffering everywhere because of what's happening. But then you feel it and you're trying to shut yourself off from it because you don't want to lose your own will to live. Diba? So it's, it's that way for me. So if I wish I could change the way things are, but you can't because if you don't have that much power, parang binabangga mo yung ulo mo sa pader eh. So I'm not exactly a masochist either. So, but there is really a sense of helplessness when, when uh, bad things happen to others and you just do not have the power to change it for them. Yeah. So, uh, I see what you mean about like, well, in this sense, you're choosing it because of how it can affect so many other people's lives. Yes. Um, can I ask maybe one more person? Because um, I'm curious about those who chose uh, answers that are a bit different from Georgie. So, like, for example, Melissa chose sex, wealth, and fulfilling career. Um, so can you tell us about why you chose those three things? Um... I choose wealth because I can care uh, care for and provide a comfortable life for my cats if I choose wealth. So, cats are happiness. <laughs> Fulfilling career because that's what you do almost the majority of your time. So, why not be comfortable about it? And I choose <laughs> sex because... Why not? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, uh, parang for you, um, well, yung choice mo of wealth is similar to Georgie, but the reason behind it is kind of different. Na, um, mm-hmm. It also affords and your, you know, your pets or whoever you love to live comfortable lives, which is kind of something that's important to us also. Okay. So I'm not going to ask everyone to explain their answer because I have a, a next question. So the same six things, um, the universe has decreed that you will have all six or just five or just four or three or two or one or none in your life. And you get to decide the order in which those things kind of enter your life or come into your life. So that means out of those six things, parang kayo na mahala. Like, uh, which of those you would experience and in what sequence they would end, come into your life. So, for example, someone might say, now, well, I want to start out, I want to experience, have the wealth early on, and then I want to have sex, and then finally I want to experience um, love. So, it depends on which. Uh, so, Red's question is, do you lose the things that came first? So, no. Uh, but it's just which one do you acquire first? But the sequence does not imply that the the first uh, things that you show um, will be lost when you get to the next one. Uh, so cumulative fact. <laughs> 
how long is the gap between the things? Um, it it depends. Uh, wala namang six na um luxury phone. What's long enough for it to to be significant? Like let's say maybe at least half a year. So parang wag naman yung parang day one, day one fulfilling career, day two nadagdag na yung love. Parang ano naman yung think about like uh, a substantial period of time between those between um when those things come into your life. Ooh, so Frank said, fulfilling career first, and then sex, and then love, wealth, and marriage. But never children. Okay, so we still have some people um, sharing their answers, but I'm going to ask a few more people to explain what they put in so far. So again, if you don't want to explain, okay lang, you can decline. Um, Frank, uh, because you, you put your answer in first, do you mind if I ask you to tell us a bit about why uh, you chose, so you chose five out of the six, um, and you left children out, um, and you fix this particular sequence. Uh, yeah, can you tell us a bit more about why uh, you chose this sequence? Uh, fulfilling career, uh, wait, can you hear me? I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, fulfilling career first because like if that, that's what you do with your life. I mean, I imagine this is something that you didn't have to do for money. Um, so something that you want to do with your life, that's essentially who you are. Like if you had, if you didn't have to worry, this is how I interpreted it, okay? If you didn't have to worry about money, what would you want to do? So, um, I wouldn't, I most likely wouldn't be a programmer. I'd probably be teaching or um, running some advocacy. So, if you did that for the rest of your life and didn't have the rest, that would still be, that would still be nice. Like, you would think highly of yourself. Um, sex, because sex is good. Um, love, because... If you don't have love, if you don't have, if you get love first, but without sex, that's kind of empty, I think. Um, wealth as in uh, money, I think, in excess of what you need. I think that's good. Uh, it would help others. That's just uh, money you could give away or whatever. Um, what else did I say? I said after wealth, marriage, that's optional as in like if love reaches that point, then that could be a next progression, and then children are like, like nah, nah. <laughs> so like I think Frank has made his views about children um, very very clear. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll ask a couple more people, um, especially those whose uh, sequence uh, and answers were not quite the same as Frank. So, um, maybe we can ask, oh, I'll ask Tony. Um, so, Tony only chose three out of the six things. Um, so, his answers were, well, yeah. So, Tony said he'll go with wealth first and then sex and career. Yeah. So, the first one is because I think if you don't have this right early on, it's a very limiting thing. For you in the future. The second one is obvious, I guess. And the third one is you spend your life, your adult life, mostly uh, with your career, right? 
like a good considerable time like eight sometimes 10 hours a day so if it's not fulfilling then it doesn't give you happiness so uh parang for Tony, um you well as something that um just makes life uh a lot easier i guess gives you more options uh yeah. and then sex uh, yeah um sex uh, i guess parang related to pleasure and uh enjoyment and then you mentioned that your career can be a source a fulfilling career can be a source of happiness especially knowing that you spent a lot of your adult life um yes. working yeah um pursuing your career um i do want to pick up on something red dice in the chat so he said na love is the most big item here um and uh, i think that's a great point i think that maybe a lot of us not necessarily everyone but um i think some of the responses here are coming from the assumption that we're talking about romantic love um but as red pointed out uh, love can mean many different things it can include platonic love uh, it can include your love for your pets it can include uh, your love for like a bigger community that you're part of um and so maybe when we consider those things i think that some people's answers might change a little bit um who else do i want to ask um i'm looking for people who have mentioned children as again see joseph I asked him to unmute, pero parang hindi siya active. Ah, okay. Sige, no worries. How about Abigail? Hi. May picture there lang yung sinulat ko to, right? So, maybe. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, does the answer have to, like, relate to why I put children there in the first place? Or do you want to? So, so do you want the answer for the whole thing or do you want to just or do you like the explanation of why do I have children in the list lang? Uh, the whole thing. So including uh para yung specific na <laughs> Okay. So uh so I put well first because it's really um, what I call the my bastion of control. So if uh, the pandemic has demonstrated and many people have suggested that, you know, having a bit of money here and there is what helps you cushion uh cushion yourself in during the pandemic and cushion others during the pandemic so among all of the six things that provide happiness but this is what really represents um semblance of control for me and that's what i really want first and foremost and then i chose love next because i was coming out from the interpretation that it's not just romantic love na i was it was the closest word that i can find to community and communal spaces so it's not just familial love it's not just romantic love uh sex because again why not right it's uh it should not be it should not be um shelved away since it's just a it's a need it's a need for everyone as much as uh, as much as shelter or food is and there's no shame in that fulfilling career that only it only comes so late in because i don't know what that looks like yet that you know it can happen one or the other marriage of course another move towards stability and uh, the last thing the last thing is maybe 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 children because um 
I'm very, I am very conscious of what it can look like to people who promote the child-free lifestyle. And I am a very strong advocate of the child-free lifestyle. So it doesn't, so I understand that can, that it may not make sense to people now. Oh, I don't, I, ha I am happy for you that you chose to be child-free. That I also want children. It's very, it's a weird space to be in. So I still have to reconcile that for myself. Now, okay, do I actually want children after all, or can I live without them? Because the irony is, in many of my jobs, I've worked with kids, and I am known to work really, really well with kids. Ang what I just explained na lang is, well, I'm good at. I'm good with children, pero raising them is another matter. So it's a very place of doubt for me, which is why I put it last. Cool. Thank you, Abigail. So um, parang what I'm hearing from you is like, um, for example, with, when you talk about uh, children, uh, you mentioned that this is something that you're a bit tentative about, which is perfectly fine uh, and that is something that on one hand you don't see as a necessity for happiness for everyone uh, but you think that might bring happiness into your own life um, so thank you for that and I think Mac also mentioned in the chat kids are okay when I don't have to look after them full time <laughs> so I think there's a difference between uh, enjoying the company of kids uh, which can be uh, a great source of pleasure, but uh, versus the responsibility of taking care of kids, um, which might give people a sense of purpose and fulfillment, but might kind of deplete or decrease their feelings of pleasure uh, a lot of the time. Um, so I, I mentioned these six things, um, you children, fulfilling career, marriage, love, wealth, sex, um, because these are some of the things that uh, we are often told, whether implicitly or explicitly, explicitly in society, are important in our life for us to experience happiness and for us to have a so-called good life. Um, but if we ask the question of whether the science actually supports these claims, like, the science really supports the idea that children will make you happy, the science supports the idea that the wealth will make you happy. Um, it becomes a lot more complicated. Uh, one of the reasons uh, it's related to what Fred mentioned earlier, that if in the first place, it's really hard to define what happiness is uh, and therefore to measure it. Um, so the findings of the research that is out there um, varies partly depending on how they measure happiness, how they define happiness. Um, and uh, one idea that I like, uh, one way of thinking about it that I like, that I kind of wanted to share with you guys, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to share my screen. Uh, let me try it now. Um, no, not working. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so one thing, one idea that I like is uh, the uh, a distinction stemming from the ancient Greeks, but still relevant until now, I think. Uh, the distinction between happiness as pleasure, being in the company of good friends, those are pleasurable things, having great sex, pleasurable things. Uh, I always want to, like whenever people include sex in their list, I, I always want to say, I, I, I hope you mean good sex, right? Because not just any sex will make you happy. Um, and I think that's true of all of those things that we mentioned. Um, but, wait, not just any children will make you happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yung happiness as pleasure on one hand versus happiness as purpose and fulfillment on the other hand. So yung Greeks, yung words nila for that were hedonia and eudaimonia. Um, so yung hedonia yung most of you I sorry kay Tim ko lang napapadala. Uh, yung hedonia yung related to pleasure kaya nga may mga hedonists 
uh, yung eudaimonia yung related to purpose and fulfillment. And so, depending on which of those you define or think of as happiness, uh, your answers to the question of what makes you happy uh, will probably vary. Uh, but generally, um, the research on what makes human beings happy, uh, yung, the answers that can be generalized around the world um, are complicated also because, like I said, there's no one single answer that will work for everyone, except for one thing, uh, which I'll mention later. Um, but I want to run through this list of six things um, quickly. So first, you children. Um, it's a heated issue. It's a heated question. Will children make you happy? Some people say, yes, children will put meaning into your life. Like Georgie mentioned earlier, diba? Parang your life will change so much when you have children. But some people will say, no, children will make it impossible for you to do the things that you want, to travel, to, you know, to, to live your life the way you want to. There's no warranty and no return policy. Uh, it can increase your anxiousness, like Romy said, because you may not be able to raise them properly. Um, and the interesting thing in the studies about children and happiness is that uh, the answer to the question depends on how, when you ask the people who have children and those who don't have children about their happiness. So when you ask the questions about children um, and happiness or mood or enjoyment, during people's day-to-day -day life, like if you administer a survey in the middle of someone's day um, and you compare parents versus non-parents, parents are more likely to report lower happiness, lower enjoyment. And that's probably not surprising because they're probably so busy, um, you know, picking up after their kids. Um, these days, maybe they're trying to help their kids with online school, I don't know. Um, so it's a lot to be busy with. It's a lot to be responsible for, which is probably not the greatest source of pleasure. But if you ask people uh, to reflect on usually at some point um, when their children have grown up a little bit and you ask them to reflect on what that experience has been like, um, usually parents will refer to children as to the children and to their experience of having children as having been one of the biggest sources of happiness and meaning in their life. Um, and I think that tells us something about it's about yung, yung, yung two kind of dimensions of happiness. Um, if you are thinking about happiness in terms of pleasure, um, children may sometimes be a, a good source of increasing pleasure and enjoyment. You're happy with your kids, of course. Um, but that's not guaranteed to be something you will experience um, consistently. And there will be dips, there will be times, definitely, if you have kids, that uh, they will bring lower enjoyment rather than greater enjoyment. But um, for most parents, uh, parang when they kind of assess the experience of having children, uh, parang overall at a general level, and think about what that experience has brought into their life, most of them find that it has given them a greater sense of purpose, a greater, a greater sense of meaning. Um, and so it seems na in that sense, it is possible for children to make you happy or to help you live a happy life. Um, another uh, item on the list that is also very contentious is wealth. Um, so we live in a capitalist society, or most of us live in capitalist societies. Most of us live in very consumerist societies. So one of the implicit messages that we're often told is that children, or no, not children, money will make your life better. Money will make you happy. Um, so is that true or is it not true? Um, several people have mentioned in the chat that um, the, the research shows that it is true up to a certain point. So there's, if you think about the correlation between wealth and happiness, but if you think about it as a graph, um, of course, if you're comparing from the very, very lowest levels of wealth, so if you're at uh, um, at the at 
poverty levels and you compare um, their happiness to someone who is middle class, let's say, um, generally, merong correlation, meaning uh, more wealth, more money, more resources, it's correlated with happiness. And I think we can understand why, uh, not just because of the things you can buy, um, but because of the security and the safety that it assures you of. Um, but as many people have also pointed out, uh, yung wealth past a certain point does not really assure happiness. So people who are much, much richer than middle class don't really report ha much higher happiness um, than those who are at uh, significantly lower levels. So it seems na yung relationship ng wealth to happiness has more to do with ensuring your safety and survival and security. Uh, but in and of itself, it does not um, lead to higher happiness. Um, the other things on the list, so for example, you have, uh, we included sex. Uh, for many people, that can be a great source of pleasure, uh, which is a form of happiness. Um, but as some people have pointed out, parang it might not be, it might not fulfill yung purpose and ng, or uh, dimension ng happiness. Um, the one thing I mentioned earlier, the one thing that the research supports is consistently correlated to happiness, uh, both in terms of uh, pleasure and purpose fulfillment. If, taren, um, pili ko parang kailangan may song number para dito. It's, the, it's love, um, but Love here is not defined as romantic or sexual love, but also as um, yung meaningful relationships, meaningful, secure relationships, which we can have with a partner, yes, but also with family members, with friends, um, yeah, with uh, other members of our community. Um, so yung, uh, the research about this suggests that uh, people who have close, um, secure ties, attachment, relationships, um, are generally report higher levels of happiness and satisfaction in their life. Um, whether or not, you know, they have a lot of wealth or whether or not they have kids. Um, and it ties back to one thing that Red mentioned earlier, uh, yung idea na uh, humans are social beings. Um, we kind of evolved to to seek out attachment. Uh, kaya nga, most modern um, theories of human motivation um, mention relationships and the sense of belongingness as one of our basic needs, our basic psychological needs. So yung fulfillment ng needs natin for um, belongingness uh, it's one of the things that helps us grow and flourish and experience happiness uh, and a good life. Um, the thing about, I think the common misconception about that is um, the idea na, ah, so if love and relationships are what lead to happiness, then I should pursue more of them. Parang, so dapat madami, madami, so dapat madami akong friends. Uh, dapat madami akong nakaka-interact within a week or a day. Um, kind of similar to what uh, was mentioned earlier na sometimes we chase likes uh, and reactions in social media uh, because it does bring kind of a temporary high. Uh, but here when we're talking about the link between relationships and happiness, um, parang the, the science is clear na it's not about quantity. Uh, it's not about having, although having a day of polyamory, woo. Uh, and for some people, that can be a, an arrangement that will bring greater happiness uh, rather than being confined to yung monogamous expectations, monogamous norms. Um, but generally, the science shows na um, people with meaningful uh, relationships, meaning people who are able to uh, to share their true selves, kagaya nung na-mention kanina, 
um, to show, to share their joys as well as their fears, their anxieties with at least two or three other people in their lives. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a romantic partner. Um, usually are the happiest or, or usually experience uh, greater happiness throughout their life. Um, sabi ni Joji, the thought of engaging in polyamory gives me a headache. <laughs> um, so definitely quantity of partners uh, and quantity of relationships does not assure greater happiness. Um, but rather quality. Um, before we end, uh, before I, I end my my what I was what I'm saying, I also wanted to share one more thing, but I don't think it's gonna share. Um, but maybe I can. Okay. So yung Yung, well, some of the more, more current um, models of um, happiness and fulfillment. Kasi if you, most of you have probably heard about um, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it's super popular. Like everyone has heard about it. So you have to fulfill your basic needs first, and then your self esteem needs, and so on, and then you self actualize. Um, with Wi-Fi at the bottom. Oh, wow, hindi wife yung nilagay ni Ren. Sarot. Um, so, that was kind of, uh, that, that was a, a big idea in the science of happiness and living a good life uh, for a while. But not, there's not really a lot of empirical support for uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, because of the way it presents needs as having an order na ito lagi yung dapat maunang ma-fulfill yung nasa baba uh, and then and then you are able to fulfill the needs at a higher level. So some of the more modern models of happiness and fulfillment um, present the elements of a good life in a different way, like they're not a hierarchy. They are elements that um, will all kind of come together to give us uh, a sense of fulfillment uh, and, and meaning in our life. So one of my favorite models is um, based on the work of Martin Seligman. He's a positive psychologist. So yung sabi niya, there are six building blocks of the good life. Uh, at hindi yung yung six things that I mentioned in my list earlier. So the model is called the Perma V model. Um, is anyone here familiar with this? Has anyone encountered this before? So I put in the first three positive emotions, uh, including happiness, um, including a sense of awe, including a sense of curiosity, uh, engagement, um, meaning feeling like fully uh, immersed in what you're doing. Um sense have been success with in a sense of sense of flow. Um, Relationships, like I mentioned, meaningful relationships. The M in Firma V, ayan, thank you, Red. The M in Firma V is not marriage. Um, it's meaning. Uh, so, yung sense of being connected to something bigger than ourselves. Uh, and I think that's also related to uh, why some people earlier uh, mentioned career. Uh, fulfilling activities, not necessarily your work, uh, as being a big source of happiness. Um, for some people, maybe having children uh, also uh, in, uh, induces a sense of meaning because there's now you're taking care of someone uh, beyond yourself. Um, Better's internet. I think it's my earphones. Uh, they conked out, and now I'm just using my laptop microphone, which apparently is better. <laughs> no, it's Perma V. It has improved everything. Um, yeah. So the A in, per in the Perma V model talks about achievement. Um, so yung sinasabi nito is for many of us, uh, a sense of competence, a sense of 
you know, you're you're learning new things, you're able to acquire new skills, uh, can also be a source of happiness, uh, and can contribute to living a good life. Uh, and finally, the V in Perma V uh, is vitality, uh, which talks about uh, being able to uh, to meet our physical needs uh, and to be able to um, yeah to to uh, engage in activities. Perma V sounds like a shampoo commercial. Very parang pantin ba? Um, so kanina earlier, uh, Red mentioned that exercise has been uh, his unexpected source of happiness in uh, the past week. So yung exercise uh, has definitely been shown to contribute to a sense of vitality. Um, so it sounds like a male sex enhancement product. Um, I wonder if, if, Mart, if, the, if the person who created this model were a woman, would it have a different name? <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, so yung, yung pinapoint out ng framework na to, or ng model na to, um, is that there's no one single source for happiness if we're seeking out a good life. Um, there's many strands that can, can contribute to it. So not one single thing or person or uh, accomplishment. Um, and I think, uh, I think related to what we're talking about today, because um, we're talking about happiness um, with regards to being religious versus being secular, right? Um, so some people claim that happiness comes, uh, that religious people, religion makes people happier. Uh, merong mga studies tungkol doon. Um, but it seems na uh, re religion is connected to happiness for some people because of the, re the way that it can facilitate some of the elements in this model, like engagement. Uh, for some people, it facilitates a sense of meaning. Uh, maybe it facilitates a sense of vitality, di ba, sa ibang religions. They, they kind of incorporate like movement and singing into their, ano, into their, uh, their um, activities. Um, so in other words, uh, for, those, for those of us who are secular, like most of us here, um, it seems na these elements, you don't have to go into to be religious to experience these elements. Um, religion is one way, but definitely not the only way for people to, um, to, to experience positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaning, achievement, and vitality. Uh, and so maybe the question now is, um, where can we seek out these elements, uh, what experiences, uh, what pursuits can enhance these things so that we can experience our perma-V, um, our, ano, ano nga, ang suggestion ni Red ay M vapor, <laughs> uh, vampire. okay. So I hope that, I'll stop here, but I hope that that gives uh, some of us some things to think about, uh, maybe expands our idea of what happiness means, uh, what a good life means, um, and how we can pursue those things um, regardless of whether or not we are religious. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bea. Yay! Okay, so um, our next talk is about uh, looking for happiness and hope in challenging times. So, Chris Karanda is a humanist psychologist. He's also my therapist. So welcome, Chris. Hello, um, everyone. Yeah. Also, uh, please, everyone, try to speak in English so that some people from other countries can understand what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. We start, Chris. Okay. Hello, everyone. Again, thank you for inviting me to, to share. Uh, I actually like this uh, very casual format. Um, so feel free to... Uh, uh, ask questions, uh, bring up certain topics, uh, and I'll make sure to provide a lot of time for questions later. So I'll just go through what I prepared for today very, uh, very fast. 
So um, when when Tin asked me for uh, a title that um, for my talk, I wanted to well, I came up with looking for happiness and hope in challenging times. No? Uh, reflections of a humanist psychologist, and you can see that I'll be speaking in a very personal way uh, in terms of my own journey to looking for happiness and hope, and particularly looking because I believe that it's a constant, ongoing search. Um, and well, I'll be sharing how how I find happiness and uh, and hope, especially during the pandemic. Uh, also, uh, just wanted to say hello to Bea. I actually know her from UP, so I used to teach in Bea also. I uh, in UP also, and um, uh, yeah, thank you for discussing uh, the happiness and the science behind it. Uh, I actually uh, did some reading before this, just so uh, I can remember the things that I studied before in graduate school. Um, Anyway, uh, going back to my to my background. So, so as Tim mentioned, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I've been practicing since 2003. Um, and I'm also a play therapist. So I actually uh, my clients are usually children and adolescents, but <laughs> yes, or children at heart. <laughs> okay, um, uh, but I do have adult clients also. So. Uh, no limitation there, um, but uh, because of my training, uh, so my training in play therapy is uh, something that has taught me to value what children say, uh, to see um, that children say a lot of wise things that adults need to listen to. Um, so actually, the, the, the kind of approach that I've been trained in in play therapy is a, a child-centered approach. No? And in clinical psychology, uh, I've also been trained uh, in a client-centered approach. So these are actually, I guess it's another, um, in psychology, you can define it as a humanist psychology. No? Um, because you believe in the agency, the, the ability of the person that you are talking to. You believe in uh, empowerment and the ability of people in general. Uh, later, I'll share a bit more about that. Um, I also wanted to share uh, that but before psychology, what I was very passionate about, no, and this is like teenage angsty years, um, uh, I was very much into music. So I, it was quite, uh, you know, it, it's a pleasant surprise for me to find out when I was in college that, wow, it's possible to integrate my passion, my love for music and the arts to therapy, so music and psychology. You know? So in, in my sessions, uh, particularly uh, a lot of adolescents, you know, uh, they're really uh, drawn to music and if that's their way of expressing themselves. Um, so I try to integrate as much of that as I can also. Um, since there was a topic about religion also, I also wanted to share a little bit about my own experience uh, with regards to religion. And so I was brought up as a Catholic. Uh, I went to a Catholic school. Um, but, you know, uh, I guess like many of you, you went through the, the going through uh, a lot of questions. There are a lot of unanswered questions and I was not really satisfied with the with the answers that I got from people. So I kept searching for what I really believe in, what I really believe in. And, and I was thinking if I was atheist or agnostic, I, I went through that um, until finally I just stopped. Somewhere along the way, I just stopped thinking about what, what do I name this? <laughs> uh, I don't know, I just kind of felt like, okay, I'll just do what I'm doing, you know, and. And based on my experience as a therapist, which I'll share later, um, there are things that uh, that I believe in that make my life meaningful. Um, so I'll, I'll share that a little bit later. No? 
but yun, yeah, I did some uh, reading about positive psychology and some studies on religion and happiness. And like, like what Bea said, it's quite complex. No? Uh, it's hard to pin down. Like, there's no straight answer to it. Uh, in general, there are a lot of people who are religious who are also very happy. Um, but when I tried to tie that up with my experience as a therapist, no? I've encountered a lot of parents. Um, so when I'm, when I'm uh, doing therapy with a child, I've encountered a lot of parents who, who are very religious, uh, very devout Catholics, um, but they are also abusive to their kids. No? So this brings about some, you know, it, it makes me angry. You know? That to be to be blunt, it makes me angry. It makes me frustrated that people who are like that can treat people in their home very differently. No? And I've encountered that again and again. So I try to make sense of it. Uh, okay, so the studies say that you know, in general, religion does bring happiness. Um, but like like what Bea said, it's also uh, because of it's not religion itself. It's it's what it helps the person actually uh, achieve, no? whether it's a meaningful life, engagement with others. Uh, these are the things, these are the, the variables actually that, that really matter. No? So, um, so I just, I actually uh, listed down like some of my observations um, with how people uh, or with how religion can also be blinding to, to some people, like um, like for example, uh, they give thanks to the Lord uh, all the time, but then they forget to give thanks to the person right in front of them. So these these examples um, kind of really lead me to to define myself more as a humanist. Like you know, what matters for me is uh, yeah, meaningful relationships, our interactions with others. If you are religious and you believe all these things that, uh, um, uh, let's say, the church or your church says, but then you treat others badly, you know, I I really am against that. You know? So, yeah, so that has kind of defined for me uh, how important it is, or what that what's more meaningful for me meaningful for me really is. Uh, the relationships and how you treat others. Okay. Actually, on, on another note, no, just have to add this. So when, and um, just my personal bias, like when people say uh, God fearing, um, I just have a general uh, reaction to it, uh, like a knee jerk reaction. Of parang, why does it have to be fear? <laughs> yeah, um, it's like a, it's like discussion on discipline. No? And this is something that you can see not just in families but nationwide. Like, why does discipline have to be something that's feared? Why why is discipline equated to punishment? Why does it have to be something? Why do you have to? Why does it have to involve fear all the time? Right? There are other ways of disciplining that are more effective, actually. But that's another for another topic altogether. Okay. Um, okay. So I'll go to the things that I believe in and it's very much involved in my work as a therapist um, uh, these are the things that i've experienced time and time again and i feel like if i don't believe these things i probably won't be able to do my work well so just to share with you these are the things that make um, my work meaningful but i also as much as possible try to apply it to my own personal life so Number one, I believe in the power of stories. So when a person goes to, uh, to therapy, you know, most important thing is to feel listened to. And that's powerful in itself. And for you to be able to share your own unique, in, uh, unique story to, other, to, to others or to someone who, who will listen, I, I believe that that's powerful and that's also healing and uh, we take for granted listening because you know we we hear but we don't necessarily listen all the time or we're so busy and you know understandably we're wrapped up in our own lives 
and that it's hard to find time to listen. And even now in this pandemic and we're stuck at home, interestingly, uh, we can get so busy that we don't really have uh, that time to, to talk with the people that we're with. So um, that's very important for me. And I've, I've seen how, you know, just in the facial expression of a person that I'm talking to, just being able to feel that uh, I was listened to, nag-iiba, kahit yung facial expression nila, it, you know, it changes, it, it, is a, it becomes lighter, just feeling like for the first time I felt listened to, right? Or for the longest time, I, I haven't been feeling listened to, but now I feel listened to. So that, I believe in that. Um, and that our stories are, you know, we all have our own unique story. Okay, number two, I believe in valuing the process. Um, I believe that people are driven towards finding happiness and growth once given an accepting and non-judgmental environment. So that's the way that I've been trained. Um, and uh, it wouldn't be effective if I didn't believe that. If I were just doing it because I was trained in, in it, like, you know, it's just, it's just really a, a strategy or a, or a skill, no? No, I, I believe that it has to be something that you really believe in. And uh, this, this is tested time and time again no, in my own experience because, uh, you know, I, I've, I've handled people who may be depressed, uh, have anxieties, struggling with those very heavy things. And I, I f when I listen to them, I, I, feel, I feel that heaviness and I, I feel that hopelessness too. And it's not, not hard to, to feel it because there are really a lot of things to actually feel hopeless about, especially nowadays, right? So it's, it's more challenging to find something that will bring us hope and happiness in this kind of situation. But, I, but later I will share, I believe that that's possible. Um, and so there are challenging uh, situations where even I feel like, oh, meron ba talagang, uh, is there really hope for this client? No? So it, it gets to that point. Um, but time and time again, uh, I feel like um, it does happen. And you know, sometimes it takes, you know, there's no time to it. it uh, it's hard to just give it some time limit. Like a lot of people who go to therapy ask me, so how long will it be? Will it be for one year? Or my child is like this, how, can, can he or she be cured or fixed? in uh, in this span of time so it's hard to just give a time limit to it there's each one of us we have our process no? and it's something that cannot be rushed it's like it's like grief no? um, when you're grieving and you feel like um, well you, f you feel like uh, you have to be happy you have to show a happy face all the time uh, what happens there is that you you set aside what your true feelings are, no? and uh, there's a consequence to that. You know, the tendency is that they'll come out in different ways. They'll come out uh, in other ways that you may not expect. So it's good to be aware of that. No? So believing in the process is very important for me and in my work. No? And related that to that is I believe in the value of emotions. Um, a lot, you know, it, when I think about all the people I've talked to at work, um, one commonality uh, that's quite uh, in general for many of them is that um, they're, they might have encountered or they, they, might be, they might be in a situation where they feel like their emotions are not valid. No? Um, and this is something that um, I think it's a human you know, it's part of human nature. You know, when we encounter unpleasant emotions, we try to shrug it away. We try to say, oh, let's think of happy things. You know, we force ourselves to think of positive things. You know? But again, there are consequences to that. And um, one possible consequence, especially if it's a child, you know, um, the child might think, oh, okay, um, my mom or my dad is saying, I, I shouldn't be feeling sad, but I am sad because let's say, uh, my dog died no? or a friend uh, is no, no longer my classmate. No? These are natural reasons to feel sad. 
it's quite natural, it's valid. But when a person tells the child, don't be sad or you shouldn't be sad because, well, you're so much more uh, blessed than other people, you know, the usual script, um, it makes them feel like uh, maybe there's something wrong with me. You know, maybe I shouldn't be, maybe they're right. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Um, so that, that adds extra pressure. You're already feeling sad. You're already growing, uh, going through grief. And then there's that added pressure that maybe you shouldn't be doing. That, that internal struggle makes it more difficult to actually deal with sadness um, and other emotions. Um, and prolonged, you know, if that's prolonged, that kind of environment is prolonged, that can lead to depression. That can lead to something more than just sadness. And by depression, I mean like clinical depression. Okay, um, so another thing I believe in is, oh, sorry, before I say that, um, I know you've probably seen this in social media and there's a, there's a TV series that's entitled, It's Okay to Not Be Okay. I haven't actually <laughs> watched that. Um, I'm interested in it, but um, it's just that, that phrase, you know, uh, it's, it's so common, but it's cliche, but it's true. You know, right now, in this situation, where we're stuck at home and we feel so helpless about things, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to feel that there are days that you're not motivated to do anything and just you want to lie down in bed. It's, it's not unnatural, it's not abnormal to feel that way. Um, and another thing I wanted to share that's uh, Hollywood naman is uh, one of my favorite uh, movies is Inside Out. If you, you know, the Pixar movie, I love it because of the way that how creative and how simple uh, they're able to teach kids and actually adults to um, the importance of emotions. Like this, you know, the start of the movie, they're wondering what's the purpose of sadness. <laughs> Let's just put her in a circle, the right? Bata Joy in the movie. You know? So, uh, but in the end, it's just the realization that sadness is important and all the other feelings as well, no? anger, disgust, all, um, and fear. Um, you know, uh, these are all important. And that's, it's that realization that uh, changed things, you know? the acceptance that it's, it's, it plays a purpose. Yeah, I just wanted to promote that. <laughs> okay, anyway. okay, another thing I believe in, I believe in the healing power of the arts. As I mentioned, you know, I'm passionate about music. Uh, maybe if we have time, I'll play a song for you later because you're a captive audience. Anyway, <laughs> um, so sometimes it's not possible to capture what you're feeling through words. Lang, no, it's, no, words are not enough, and being able to express them through art or music is powerful. You know, it's just just one look at an artwork or when you listen to music that really touches you. It's more powerful than someone telling you, oh, you're not alone. <laughs> because actually, that's the message of the art, uh, you know, the artwork or the, the song, right? Usually. Um, so I believe that it enables us to be able to hope and to transcend, to actually look beyond what is the present, whatever we're struggling with. And especially if it involves a sense of play. So when you're playful about, you know, not as, you know, you can be playful about cooking or you can be playful about what are the, you know, maybe later you can bring up what are the new, new things that you've tried while we're in lockdown. Like what maybe being uh, in this situation has led you to try different new things, whether it's gardening or um, uh, cooking or picture taking or any photography, you know, so I think these all play a part in actually uh, maintaining our sanity in this kind of situation. So I'd love to hear, you know, what, what you, you're also involved in. Okay, finally, um, I believe that therapy or any approach should be empowering. So whether it's, uh, you know, whether you're part of a, a group like this or uh, whether you are, you are religious and you are part of a church or whatever, you know, just group, Barcada group, <laughs> uh, it's helpful if it's an empowering experience for you. It's not something that uh, puts you down. No? I think that's a, my, my other complaint about like going to church before. It's like 
pinagsasabihan palagi ng pare yung yung you know what she, parang uh, parang pinapagalitan tayo palagi I, I really you know my body I'm sure I'm sorry but my body just kind of really rejected that <laughs> I don't believe in that so it, it has led me to where I am now so yeah just just sharing that <laughs> so those are the things I believe in and uh, just uh, very quickly you know uh, and related to what I mentioned uh, just concrete things that you know, are really helpful now in a pandemic. So uh, challenging times, uh, this pandemic. No? Uh, we don't want to be in this situation. No one wants to be in this situation, but it does and it can be an opportunity to do the following things. Number one, pause and rest. That might sound uh, basic, but actually <laughs> it's hard. No, it's hard to just like really set aside. Now, this is the, my time to rest and pause. No? Number two, related to that is time for reflection and reassessment. No? Uh, to wonder where am I in my life now? What do I want to happen? How has my experience shaped me? Uh, wondering about your meaning and purpose, which as we saw, no, is related to happiness. Um, I saw again in social media this, this quote that's been being that's being passed around. Sabe, if you can't go outside, go inside. Uh, I like that quote. That's pretty wise. I feel. Uh, I know it can be scary going inside because it can be overwhelming. Na parang you're face to face with what your fears, your anger, your hurt, your sadness. But you know you can do it gradually. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. Uh, but it, you know this being stuck at home kind of forces us to be that way. You know before you sleep. Right? And these are the, you know, you have thoughts and feelings before, you know, before sleeping when it's quiet. No? So it's good to devote some time to actually you know, address them or maybe just listen. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, be creative and explore new things. This, this might, you know, being stuck at home can actually bring out, um, bring out um, new things. You can explore playfully, you know, bring out that playful side of you and try to explore um, something new, maybe something you've never tried before. Okay. And then finally, it's, it's, it may be a chance to also reconnect with each other, you know, to get to know each other more deeply. Um, after all, we're all in uh, under, you know, you're, whoever you're with, you're stuck with, <laughs> don't have much of a choice. You, so <laughs> might as well get to know each other, you know. Um, I don't know if that will be a like, totally pleasant experience, but uh, you know, maybe it might reach some sort of understanding that might be helpful. So, so, um, so yeah, so, so just to, just to end, uh, I wanted to share a drawing of my daughter. I mentioned that I have a daughter. She's four years old, and her name is Harana, because I love music. We love music, my wife and I. Um, and she likes to draw. And we have been almost every day, it's like we have like drawing sessions. And it's fun, you know, it's fun. It's, I guess this is one thing that uh, makes parents happy when, you know, uh, when they play with a child, it's possible to reconnect with your playful side also. Anyway, I'll share this picture of her drawing. Are you able to share? Yeah, okay, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Can everyone see it? Is it a superhero? Close. Uh, she's in her uh, Frozen 2 phase. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that is Elsa. That's Princess Elsa. And uh, uh, you can probably guess this small red thing is the coronavirus. So without any prompt, yeah, so without any prompt whatsoever, this is what she drew. And she said, this is Princess Elsa telling the coronavirus to go away. So that's the power of art. You can envision, you know, it's empowering. It, you, can, you can envision something that transcends the situation that you're in, you know, the struggle, what you're struggling with. It can, you know, it can happen. It gives you hope. Uh, and she has, you know, infected me and my wife with her hope and that brings me happiness so that's why i always make sure to share this because it's 
which is wonderful. So, yeah. um, finally, uh, then do I still have time? Um, Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wrap up. Let, let's try to wrap Our, up. But yeah, sure. Sure. Um, I'm actually going to wrap up with a song if everyone is okay with that. I hope you don't mind. You are my captive audience. And, uh, <laughs> Access, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I have to uh, live what I say, right? So for me, it's music. Uh, playing with Harana actually recently uh, has made me write music again. When I was a teenager, I used to write music, angsty music. Uh, and for a long time, I haven't been writing any music and just playing with her and being infected with her creativity. I was able to come up with the music while in quarantine and it gives me hope. Here, I'll share the lyrics. All right. There's a light that shines all over the world Though the sun has fallen asleep You and I, we're here We're still together despite all of our fears you can apply it to your life and I'm just really glad again to be invited here because I think you know this can be a support group also in times like these thank yeah. you yeah. thank yeah. you so I just want to plug uh, where is my wait I just wanted to plug this um, here There. So, Happiness for Humanists, uh, I, I created a new group. Um, I, there's a new group. Oh, sorry. There. Filipino Free Thinkers Secular Support. So, it's at facebook.com groups ff.secular.support. So, let's share our tips there and then support each other if we can. Please be kind to everyone. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Chris. And uh, we will open the floor for questions. Uh, we have a lot of 
like I said, the most psychology experts uh, ever at a meetup. So we will open the floor for uh, questions. Um, but before that, yeah, just uh, seconding Tin's recommendation to join that group. Uh, mostly, free thinkers has been a very combative and destructive group. We debate among ourselves, hopefully more healthy debates than unhealthy debates. But typically, that's the mode of our communication. We debate, we discuss, and we tear down ideas and, and so on. And we are the furthest from a support group that you can ever be. Um, but this support okay. yeah, but this new support group that we are making will be will have a different focus. So it will be more about um, sharing, like uh, Tin mentioned, like all of those tips and having discussions around mental health. And one of the things that we will discuss next is secular support options. So in a very religious country, you, for example, uh, book a session with a therapist. And then the therapist assumes that you are, like they are, a religious person, which you are not. And then they start giving you tips about Jesus and God and so on. So let, let's, start, uh, open, let's start the open discussion with that question. And Chris, I want to hear an answer from, from you. So if I am an atheist and I want mental health support, like what are my uh, best uh, options? Like where do I find therapists who are secular? Like, and and uh, maybe how do I start a conversation about that? Like, is that cool? Like, can, can someone like ask you about how religious you are and so on? So, yep, let's start with that. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, uh, I think, Red, that, that's your right to ask, you know, if you're going to ask for professional help from a mental health um, therapist, you, you know, it's your right to ask if that, you know, will you, do you also, you know, just to make sure that that person knows your background and that person will not impose her own beliefs or his own beliefs on you. Actually, in general, a uh, therapist should be trained to not do that, except if you're looking specifically for like a uh, therapist slash religious advisor, you know, there, there are like combinations like that, but yeah, in general, it should be, well, I mean, therapists should be trained in a way that's, you know, not to judge a person for whatever background, no? Um, but it's also true that there are a lot of uh, people who have experienced uh, being judged or being, you know, a lot of uh, therapists imposing their own beliefs on them, and which, is, you know, I don't agree with that. Um, but you're right again to look for someone else if, you know, if it's not a match. You, know, you can just say, it, you know, I'm sorry, but it's really not a match. Um, of course, I would, well, I would promote the clinic where I work in, which is MLAC Institute. Um, that is actually, that stands for my mom's initials, uh, Maria Lourdes Arellano Carandang. She is actually a national social scientist and uh, quite a well-known uh, clinical psychologist here in the Philippines. Um, so uh, we have uh, some therapists that do online sessions. So I guess I can just uh, send you the contact numbers I get through the chat uh, if you're interested in that. But we do also, since uh, we're not a lot, we do refer to to some of our colleagues also. You know, it's it's very good to collaborate with uh, with people that you can trust too. Uh, there was uh, there was a place that we would always refer to, especially if it had to do with assessment. Uh, but I'm not sure if uh, how they're doing with this um, during this pandemic. It's called MedMom. Uh, anyway, the, the clinical head clinical psychologist there, Dr. Joanna Herrera, is actually also part of MLAC. She joins us in our uh, projects, but um, we frequently refer to her also. Um, because she's also in touch with not just uh, clinical psychologists, but all psychologists with psychiatrists, developmental uh, pediatricians. So if you're interested in that, maybe I can also drop the contact details here. Thank Great. you for thank asking. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, Tin, you wanted to say something. Yeah, so um, I, I just wanted to share. So before uh, I went to Chris, I went through two 
um, psychiatrists. And it's not necessarily that they outright uh, give you discrimination, but it's it's more, it comes out in generalization sometimes of what they say. So sometimes their advice is um, very vague or like very spiritual that doesn't necessarily resonate with me and something that I can't understand. So sometimes things like this, even if even if you're of the mindset now, you can just try to learn what you can. It's still very stressful. I mean, therapy is supposed to be for you, but then if you try to, I mean, if you try to adapt um, when it's no longer helpful for you, then it's hard. And also, uh, I wanted to say that not everyone has access to therapy. Therapy is very expensive. Um, sometimes also the the cheapest access to therapy that people can get is from religious institutions. So there are priest um, therapists out there that are like way cheaper or sometimes they're even free. And um, yeah, so I don't know how to how to balance if it's actually helpful or not for your sanity. Thanks. Thank you. Bea. Oh, Bea, you're, in, you're next on the queue. Yeah, I think Bea Oh, may good. I just add also, I just remembered when I, when I saw Bea. But Bea, in UP, uh, there's, um, a, was it Psych? Psych, sir. There you go. There. They offer, tama free? Or pag, ano lang, pag yeah. frontliners? frontliners free um, counseling therapy yeah so actually i i was gonna talk about that um so yung psych serve um it or originally like it, it offers um the people in psych serve offer mental health support services that they for the upd community like students faculty and so on and then when the pandemic started initially they were offering free services to frontliners um but because the demand was so high um they've now expanded and are offering mental health services to basically anyone who is feeling distressed and needs mental health support um, through the pandemic. So, actually, disclosure lang. Uh, I've been volunteering for PsychServe myself um, for the past few months as a psychosocial support specialist, a PSS. Um, I cannot. I am not a licensed clinical psychologist. I am not trained in therapy. I have I have training in very basic support skills. So um, the way they do it in PsychServe is that when clients sign up, they get a little information about what the client's concerns are. And then depending on um, their best um, their best um, parang estimation of what the needs are, they will assign you to a, a, a psychosocial support specialist that will be able to meet your needs. Um, so, uh, people can avail of the services for free. Um, it is a secular, um, service. I, I would like to believe, uh, that all of us who were volunteer there, um, are not, do, do not make it a point to not come from a judgmental place, um, including uh, judgments based on religious views, but also about other uh, views as well. Um, of course, I, I think Chris knows this also. Um, uh, the demand for mental health support services is really high right now. Um, and especially because yung, the one that Psych sort of offers is free. And it's, there are limits. Um, a client can talk to their... Um, PSS up to three sessions for free and then after that uh, if they still need more support they will be referred to a professional na. Um, so when I when I mention psych serve I I'm, I cannot assure um, that you're if you call them or if you reach out uh, that you will be scheduled immediately so I would not recommend it for people who have like very urgent pressing concerns um, but definitely, if you feel that you need to talk to someone, you need to work through some issues, some concerns, um, and therapy is not something that is accessible to you right now, I think it could be a good option. Uh, I also want to mention that a, a friend and colleague of mine um, jo just joined us. Uh, her name is Rian Portuguese. 
Um, she is a cl clinical psychologist. Tama ba riyan? Is riyan psychologist. Uh, usually, um, sa industrial, industrial part. Uh, okay. Industrial. Um, and some of you, if you are familiar with the social media uh, accounts of your millennial psychologist. So Rian is behind your millennial psychologist. Uh, I invited her to drop by because um, recently um, there was an I IATF announcement or, or um, yes. there, there was the IATF uh, made a call to religious uh, leaders in particular to step mm -hmm. up um, because of the supposed uh, reported increase in um, suicide rates. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I know that Rian uh, kind of felt strongly about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought Rian might also want to share yeah, some of her thoughts as well. Um, mm. Ri, okay lang ba? Sorry, I didn't tell you. Uh, we have some people in the group who don't speak Filipino, so okay lang ba? Okay. So let's uh, sige, go. Um, yeah, parang actually, uh, yung CNN Philippines because they saw my strong statement in my page. They actually asked me to to make a long statement about that about the IATF um concern, but I declined or parang I delayed my ano, my response because I'm also thinking if I, parang it might um it might cause division or parang it, be, it might um, harm then yung um, ego of those psychologists who are very spiritual. So, hmm, so I was, I'm actually thinking about making um, yung evidence-based statement about that IATF. But I, um, I point out, I pointed out on my page that um, I'm not actually against with the idea of um, asking uh, for help asking for help uh, from religious leaders because one of the intervention uh, one of the interventions in psychology is spiritual uh, in nature approach no spiritual in nature yung approach but that's only one of the approaches um parang i was just really parang bothered or concerned lang because the IATF parang prioritized to urge the religious leaders than mental health professionals parang we're actually here parang why did you prioritize yung religious leaders, di ba? Eh, we are actually trained to handle um, in uh, various uh, groups or yung um, differences or diversity of people, di ba? Parang we know how to handle that. And eh, we have a lot of cases. Eh, I'm not saying na most of them are um, actually yung nagsistigmatize, but um, most of those people kasi who are actually... Um, associated with religious approach or yung way of um, approaching yung mental, mental health na cases using yung religious approach, uh, parang most of the time they have um, um, cases uh, or parang cases associated with um, parang mental health stigma. Parang they commit mental health stigma or parang they, increases, they increase the mental health stigma dun sa mga clients nila. So, ayun, that's my, ano, that's my point lang. Parang I was really parang um, compelled to comment about the IATF. But I didn't actually write the yung long statement, the parang position paper. So I just, I, I, I make an, ano, I, I, I actually inform my followers naman it, na, that it's my opinion. No? It's my opinion. It's based on my opinion. But yun nga, um, I saw some comments from other people na they, when they made an assumption that I'm an atheist, but actually, I'm a deist naman, deist, but not really an atheist. Yun, so, yun, I just made a comment and then they made an assumption na, okay, atheist to, or yun, parang antichrist. So, yun, they bashed me on my own page. But I, I just, ano, ignored na lang, ignore yung comments. Yeah, good for you, Rian. Um, it's certainly yeah. very difficult to go against the <laughs> Roman Catholic grain in this country. But it was yeah. something that needed to be said, and you said it. Um, it was very um, courageous of you. And you have our support. Um, let's make sure that we share information about this ongoing thing that's going on, like your discourse with the IATF, and let's get more awareness about this issue. Um, thank you. 
Uh, who else has any other questions? So I think, oh, Tin, you are cute. Go ahead. And then I'll make a point after you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to add the, the harm in the government calling on religious people first also is harmful to humanists or to free thinkers because it makes us feel not seen as if we are mm. always just, we can always just, we can only get help from religion and, and like yeah. we don't exist or we can't have any other help other than not uh, religious help. Um, also, uh, uh, I understand uh, a lot of people really are in need of mental health services at this time. That's why PsychServe, uh, for example, is backed up with uh, requests. That's exactly why we started this this group in order to, you know, get people to help each other out in times like this. I mean, some of us have, have figured stuff out for ourselves. What works for us, it might be able to work for other people as well. So please share some tips. Please share your therapists that are non-judgmental. Uh, share away. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, and before I pass it on to the next person in the queue, I'm going to ask a new question. So we mentioned that therapy can be very expensive and the free ones, th that there's so much demand for that. So getting on the queue might even be difficult. So let's ask for the next best, best thing, Chris, Bea, and Rian, also Doc Margie. Like what can, what advice can we give people? I don't have money. I, I can't get on the queue of the free services, but I need someone to talk to, I need someone to help me with my mental health issues. What is my next best thing to do? Chris, go ahead. I think to join uh, a group like ah. this, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> or a similar, you know, support group. Uh, you know, uh, we really need to help each other nowadays. Um, and uh, well, well, just to let you know, it's also possible to request for like um, some sort of psychological first aid, like training. Like yeah. some some companies uh, have asked us to do that. Uh, of course, that involves payment, but you know, there are. We also have our own advocacy, like uh, MLAC. It's uh, related to parenting and families. Now. So. Uh, so we were open to training. Well, before this pandemic, we were open to training uh, like single mothers. There was a project na annually, single mothers who, uh, who wanted to, uh, to have some sort of group therapy, uh, parang, you know, effective parenting. So that was our advocacy. But um, something like that. No? It's possible to like, Make it trickle down <laughs> to others to share it with others. Uh, yeah, but if uh, yeah, I mean, if you already have like fr trusted friends that you can talk to, and you know, uh, maybe it's good to share what you know about what what helps. Okay, thank you for that, Chris. Bea, you were gonna say something. All oh, right, Rian, you ha you're unmuted now. Go ahead. Well, I'm actually just thinking. Um, there are times wherein one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling isn't actually necessary. Maybe we can just assess the situation. Maybe that person needs psychoeducation or mental health response. So maybe we can actually do that. Or maybe we can just organize a, a webinar that can actually help um, people to help themselves, like mental health response or psychological first aid or whatever you call it. Um, that that doesn't really need to be a licensed professional no, to provide yung um, psychosocial help. Like, and, and. So you, that can be applied also to those people who are actually struggling mental health concerns. So maybe we can um, bridge the gap by providing psychoeducation if that's the, ano, if that's the parang concern. Because it's so, really difficult then to provide um, free services na one-on-one -on -one, eh. Because it, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's really costly on our part. And at the same time, um, advocacy is different from professional service then. So I think that's the least thing that we can do um, to provide um, psychoeducation webinar or um, psychological first aid or mental health first aid. Yeah, so maybe we, we can, can reach a lot of people. Mm -mm. We can do a collaboration then. Uh, yes, the, yes. The, the, the psychologists in the room, let's, uh, let's think of how... <laughs> 
we can cooperate on something like that. And and yeah. on that note, um, another question for the the experts in the room. It, there are a lot of people who want to help out. They want to volunteer, but they're mm -hmm. not licensed, and they can't yeah. e exactly go to university. That will take some time, and universities mm -hmm. out, right? So, what's the ethics there? Like, how how will this one go about? Like, I I feel like I have something to contribute. Like, I want to help people get through things. So, what is the ethical way for me to start helping out in this sort of way? Um, without, of course, compromising other people, because giving people unscientific advice can be more harmful than than it's worth. Yeah, any the yeah, floor is open. Bea, you want to answer this one? Go ahead. Um, I, I don't have the complete answer, but um, some things actually. What I want, what I wanted to say earlier, is very much related to this. Um, the mm -hmm. idea na. I support actually the idea that mental health is should not be the domain of any one group or profession. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. but, um it will be very limited if only trained mental health professionals. If we if yes. we only think of mental health in that way. Now only mental health professionals can provide support. Of course, for cases na merong that that in which there are diagnosed. Um, case uh, mental health problems. Um, mm -mm. There might be a need for a professional services, but for, I think that for many people, especially at this time, a lot of people need someone to talk to, um, someone who will listen with a non-judgmental ear, um, someone who will validate that their that the worries, the feelings that they are having right now, are. Um, are real and mm -hmm. are as valid as any other emotions or any other experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I like what Red Type, the doula variant for mental health. The idea that mental health is a community effort. Um, yes. And that means that our friends, our family, our pets, ourselves can <laughs> play a role in providing mental health support. Mm -hmm. um, for, for people who are not trained professionals but want but really have um parang that motivation to provide support to people they know i think just reading up and uh, maybe watching videos on those very basic skills yes. um um basic mental health support skills i mentioned non-judgmental listening um active listening empathic listening those things are uh, really important and, and really helpful to a lot of people. I think that many of us, when we attempt with the best of intentions to support our friends and our family, sometimes we don't really know how to go about it. And sometimes we end up um, not really um, providing the best kind of support. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, um, one common mistake or one common, I don't want to call it a mistake, but one common thing that people often do um, when someone comes to them with a problem is to talk about, ah, yeah, I've been through something like that. I experienced something like that. Or, yeah, I, I, uh, I know what that's like. Um, but it's not always helpful because uh, usually when people want to talk about problems that they're experiencing, uh, they kind of need the space to talk about their own experiences and their thoughts and yeah. their feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and when we, when, we make it about, when we talk about our version of that experience, it shifts the focus away from them. Um, yes. And these are things that, for me personally, I mentioned that I've been volunteering. I, I'm not a trained professional, so... Um, I'm lucky because I have been, been able to attend um, psychological first aid training. I've been able to attend um, basic mental health support skills training in the past. Um, and those were things that I learned um, from those. I did not take like full courses, full like degree programs. But just attending and listening into those talks and those sessions was very helpful for me to learn uh, those things. So I think that those are skills that many of us can acquire. Um, yes. Can seek them out mm -hmm. Online. Yes. Um, yeah. So like, like it's very similar to what Red is saying. Now you, uh, you don't have to be a doctor to take CPR training or first aid training. Um, mm -hmm. So 
similarly, I think that um, we can all equip ourselves with the mm-hmm. skills to provide mental health support for ourselves yeah. and for people we love. Yeah. Um, Bea and Rian, uh, you're mm-hmm. mentioning uh, psychological first aid trainings. Is it possible that we can maybe democratize this and like make infographics or um, spread the information out there? Um, is there any expert that can help us or inform us of what these are? Hmm. Um, we're actually, I'm actually thinking about, um, I actually have a specific group. It's a nonprofit organization that's um, hashtag mental health PH. And we're actually planning to, um, to organize an event uh, that will cater or that will train trainers for psychological first aid and then those trainers will of course um train other volunteers so parang we'll try to empower um um different people that they can actually do yung psychological first aid without even license no just to provide like yung um, basic psychosocial services we're actually planning on that but we're still working on the module or yung specific um uh, structure no psychological first aid maybe i uh, maybe we can work on that. I'll try to update you if ever, uh, so that um, we can work together. Great, Mm-mm. very very exciting stuff. Mm-mm. So so we have these uh, options um, for. Oh, go mm-hmm. ahead, Bea. Bea, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that PsychServe also regularly posts infographics on their Facebook page. So sometimes the infographics are related to uh, self-care, um, but sometimes mm-hmm. they are also about uh, providing support for different um, people who may be from various sectors, people in your life, like how to support um, kids maybe who are struggling right now, how to support um, PWDs, uh, if, you have, if there are PWD people in your family, in your um, household. Um, mm-hmm. So that might, you might also want to check out the uh, Facebook page of PsychServe. Mm-hmm. Okay, so far we've been discussing getting help from others or getting help from, if not specific individuals in the wider community. So some people are more likely to try self-help. So I want to hear from the psychologists here, their take on that, like about individuals, like trying out like self-help, Online help, tests helping are, themselves and, and, mm-hmm. and so on. Like I'll, I'll give an example. Like right now, I am getting therapy from one of the MLAC professionals, and it's very okay. helpful. But yes. for for the longest time, and I I am still practicing um, CBT for myself, so cognitive behavioral therapy. Like there are principles there that a lot of skeptical and uh, mm. logical people would appreciate. So mm. what are you, what's your take on going that route uh, and um, I'm mentioning here that I still think that mm-hmm. getting help from a professional is the optimal way to go if you have the resources for it. But some people will have to resort to, to these kinds of things. So what are your ideas and, and thoughts on this? Well, for me, as long as it's helpful and as long as, for example, if you've encountered, um, for example, you've encountered yung um, as long as you don't over-identify yourself to uh, negative um, parang emotions or specific symptoms that you experience. Because most of the time when you try to look for self-help um, parang readings or articles and then you read the symptoms or characteristics, for example, a specific um, um, psychological disorder, tendency for other people is to over-identify themselves to the symptoms when in fact, what they actually feel are only are are valid. Those are actually valid reactions or valid um, emotional response to a very distressing event. So, you know, there's a tendency for them to overlook that it's normal. And then since they over-identify themselves or over-pathologize yung symptoms tendency, it will become um, parang uh, worse no, eventually. So, um, as long as you don't over-identify yourself as a specific na Mga symptoms na yun, as long as you find it helpful and it, it, it improves your um, well-being, it's okay. Kasi it depends on how you use the information naman eh. So for me, that's okay naman. Pero as much as possible, of course, mag uh, tayo ng professional help so, so that you're guided, properly guided. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm reminded of BuzzFeed tests, mm-hmm. right? Like, what mental <laughs> health issue are you? And then pe- <laughs> people are, oh, I'm a, I'm a narcissist or yeah. I'm, a, mm-hmm. I'm a border, I'm a borderline or whatever yeah. the BuzzFeed yeah. test tells you. And of course, there are very huge ramifications to your self identity if you strongly over pathologize as you mentioned yeah yeah it's like uh, you are more than the parang you're more than your ano eh, your psychological disorder parang as much as possible nga you don't identify yourself with your disorder and as much as possible mm-hmm. parang you don't describe what you feel based on the psychological disorder because it increases the ano eh, the mental health stigma eh. so okay yeah, yeah. um beya chris and if we can hear from doc margie too that would be great like what do you think about um, people going the self help route maybe as a precursor to actually getting the professional guidance that is still the optimal way to go. Mm-mm. Chris? Oh, I, uh, I agree with that. I mean, I'm all for uh, learning more Mm-mm. and, uh, you know, be curious about what you might be struggling with, what you're experiencing. That's good. That's already the motivation towards, you know, there's already awareness that, oh, I want, I want to change something. I want to improve something. So I think that's important to want to learn more. But I also agree with what Rian said. Uh, um, just uh, be cautious about like identifying um, not just yung sa, ane, you know, like a diagnosis, but also certain approaches. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, you just uh, keep an open mind. Na you know, um, there is what you call a match for for you. you no, know? so you don't. Uh, one thing that works for another person may not work for you. For you so it's about yes. finding what works for you. And then, right. it, of course, still, it's good to verify still um, with a professional, if possible, to consult. Very awesome. And let's hear from Doc Margie. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> anyway, uh, first of all, thank you for the others. The other few who know me and have said such nice things. It's so nakakakilig. But going to your point, um, Jeremy Kase was bothering me. That's my husband. And he was telling me that self-help is a middle-class option. So maybe that's something to think about because it's only us that have been taught that we have the power to do this, to talk ourselves out of things or to look at things and say, why do, am I feeling this way? What have the institutions, what have the, the church or my schools planted in my brain? So I take it without questioning, but because I have been trained in logical fallacies or because I have been trained in cognitive traps or CBT, I know what to do. So on the one hand, everything you said is terrific. The, the fact that we can recognize where our problems are and we don't have to go to paid professionals. We can go to other people whom we trust, right? And we know, know stuff and will not just do it to personally aggrandize themselves like Bea was talking about. Oh, yeah, ako rin merong ganyan. Or you see, I was able to go through it. So, so can you. You know, all this BS, no? So one other thing maybe we should do, which I got from Jeremy, and I'd be very willing to do this, is without sounding condescending, I think we can probably go to some barangays and some places where we can do some stuff, uh, train uh, some people who are interested, or just talk to some people who are interested. Uh, Before I did a talk with tricycle drivers, and I think it was quite good, but of course, my abante column helped me because they already knew me. But, you know, people can feel these things. Eh? People can feel if you're being patronizing or, you know, coming across like Mother Teresa in your mind. And if you really want to help. And I think that would also be very good that we could do that, maybe. I, I'd be w- very willing to do, not to organize, but to be a gopher. Okay, to follow, and I would be very willing to go to a barangay. There we are. We have another collaboration. uh, (laughs) Okay, quiet, Nako. Thank you. I'm learning so much. (laughs) And this is not, you know, patronizing. I think it is. I've learned so much. And Rian, is it Rian? Rian? Yeah, Rian. I've, (laughs) I've read your stuff. I think it's terrific. And I'm so happy to meet you, not in person, but as much in person as I can, as we can at the moment. Huh? So, Bea, thank you so much. For thank you so much, Podok. 
And thank you so much na pumunta ka. I'm so happy. Okay. Very great. Oh. myself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doc Margie. We have a question here from Mel, and this is about the stigma that people face, especially if it's your first time to get professional therapy. This is one of the major barriers, right? Like I, I recently read like a tweet saying, um, I'm not going to share like my inner secrets with my therapist. I don't want them to think I'm crazy, right? Like you even try to... Uh, do some self therapy before doing the therapy. You know, it's kind of like brushing your teeth and flossing before going to the dentist, sort of. So, so what advice can you give to people who are exploring the idea of professional therapy for the first time, like to lessen the friction for them to attempt such a um, asking for help? Uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Chris, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, just uh, short. I, I just have to say that people, you know, I admire people who go to therapy because it takes a lot of work. <laughs> it, it's, it's tiring, you know, to talk about uh, these things. Um, and it takes courage to actually, uh, and humility to admit that, you know, there, I need some help, you know. And I think it's good to have that frame of mind if it's possible to, kind of infect other people with that kind of thinking. That would be great, you know. And um, like you read and then just just sharing that you are going to therapy, that's a big deal. I mean that's a, that's something. So and it can encourage other people too. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, um, Chris. Anything to add to that? Um Rian, you're unmuted and, and Bea, Bea first, go ahead. Hi. Um I think it can be really helpful if you are able to talk to someone, especially someone that you know, you, that you trust, a friend of yours who has also uh, sought help from a mental health professional. Um, I've, I've seen this in um, when I used to teach an introductory psych class, uh, whenever I get to the part on mental health, I always invite uh, a couple of friends who have struggled with mental health issues and who are seeking help from a mental health professional. Uh, and I find that I, I, it gets quite, um, ano ba, not intense, but it, it, the, the reactions from my students are usually very uh, profound. Um, uh, se uh, I, I, I get several students, I always have students who will say na, um, they've been thinking about seeking help for some time, but they've been kind of on the fence about it. And hearing someone talk about their experiences um, and how uh, seeking help from a professional has helped them um, is, re is something that uh, makes them feel a little more confident about doing it, um, makes it seem like something that is not so alien. Uh, na parang, hey, um, this person who is a lot like me uh, has also gone through this and has also been seeking help from a mental health professional. Um, it's maybe it's not perfect, but it is not. Um, it's not something to be intimidated by. Um, so that's one thing I think that we can do. Um, yeah. Um, hopefully, there are uh, people in your life that you can talk to about that. Thank you, Bea. Mm -hmm. um, Rian, go ahead. Uh, um, may I know the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were just discussing about the stigma of doing mm -hmm. therapy for the first time, especially like I guess for for um, Doc Margie mentioned something about the the middle class uh, nature of self help. So we think that we are capable enough to help ourselves. We don't need some stranger telling us how to think, how to do things, and so on. So we are mm -hmm. we are talking about how to overcome those kinds of barriers to asking for help from professionals or even non-professionals? Well, to break that barrier, well, I think um, as a mental health professional, I usually incorporate um, my own experiences uh, my own experiences as someone who also asks for help uh, from another psychologist. Because um, I have wide audience, eh? different audiences, students, professionals. So I also talk about my experience on some parts of my webinar to, tell, to, to, to make it... Um, normal experience that even psychologists are not 
immune to mental health problems that it's okay to ask for help even if your um, current situation is not as severe as those people who are actually struggling with psychological disorder. So yon, I usually do that so that those people who are actually listening or those people who are afraid to ask for help, no, they are parang they feel empowered or somehow na alleviate yung distress in asking for help. So that's what I do. Yon. And then yon, usually I, I, I suggest to some people if they find if they find out that one of their friends or family members are afraid to seek help, I usually tell them to create a safe space for their family member or young friends, no, just to wait na uh, mag come out or mag share ng um, experience or struggle yung um, person na yon. Kasi nga, it really takes time for them to to really accept their situation that they that they really have a problem. So yon, um, sometimes they you don't need to force them to to ano eh, to ask for help. Eh. Sometimes you have to create um yung safe space muna and to build that trust. Yon. Great. That's Thank you so much for sharing that, Rian. Doc Margie, you wanted to add um, ideas about breaking the stigma and the barrier. Um, oh, you're you're muted, but I'm I'm interpreting it as you're saying you don't want to share for now, or something like that. Yeah, yeah? she's she's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I was going to bring up something, right? Like uh, we have a number of psychologists here. And it's kind of like psychologists need psychologists and those psychologists need psychologists and all the way around and all, all the way down. Uh, and it's a circle, right? It's a circle of psychologists. But it, it, it brings up the point of uh, it being a taxing thing to do, like doing therapy and listening to problems and being there. Um, and, and for some, like they do this with their loved ones. They don't know that they're making their loved ones the therapist. And that involves a lot of negativity and it can compromise, you know, relationships. And what are your, what's the usual advice you give to people who are in such situations where they knowingly or unknowingly make a person who's very close to them, their, uh, like a stand-in for the, for the therapist? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Go, go ahead, Chris. Well, I wanted to say that, uh, first of all, it's not possible to be a therapist of your spouse or, uh, you know, it's difficult to be a, a therapist to even a friend, no? Mm -hmm. yes. um, just, uh, we need to, to know that because you're involved in their lives. Um, you're personally involved, so you will be affected and you might also need therapy. <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, it, uh, it's good to acknowledge that no? um, I, I think it's good also to to practice things that you can do on your own you know self care uh, such as the things that I've mentioned uh, involving yourself in an activity where you experience something like flow you know where you're so engaged in it you know so especially now when we're stuck in, at home uh, we have to find our own space and we have to also have our boundaries also no matter how much you love the person you're with it's still good to have an activity that you uh you do on your own also thank you um, does anyone want to speak about well, that well i would like to add that it's it's also impossible to be a therapist of your friend or your family member because um there will be um, biases no? or parang preconceived notion because you already know that person. And as a psychologist, you should be aware of that. Now, you, you should know your limitation because it's also part of the code of ethics. So yun, be careful uh, with um, multiple relationships. So as much as possible, don't do that <laughs> because it's not really helpful for you and for your family member or your friend. Mo. So it's really, um, if ever, if ever now you can help no, to... to, to to at least um, parang help or give advice or talk to your family member that talagang need ng help, maybe you can actually um, communicate clearly yung stand mo um, toward that person na parang, okay, I'm speaking um, as your friend but not as a therapist or not as a psychologist. Yun, yun, something like that. You have to build that boundary. And then encourage that person to, ano, to, to seek 
yung professional help, no? For example, um, uh, to seek professional help, um, na parang um, wherein both of you will go to the therapist or dun sa another psychologist, no? To to ano to help you with to to help you sort out your problem, something like that. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, I think I, I just wanted to share then what helped me. Uh, for example, to tide me over till my next session, <laughs> let's say. Um, I, I have a collection of friends. Na they, they serve a, a specific kind of purpose. So, for example, I have <laughs> friends that just validate me. You know, like if I feel bad about something, they just tell me, yeah, that sucks, you know. Uh, <laughs> just say, yes, yes, that sucks. And then I, ha I also have a bunch of friends who give um, reasonable advice, but they're not mean about it. Like, they, they, they know to tell me what I need to hear. And then, so it's like, um, it's hard to rely on just one person. It's a lot of emotional labor. And so I like, because I, I feel bad about that. I feel like I'm, I'm such a downer or I'm such a, a, a weight to society. And so I, I like to, to go to many different people so that they don't get tired of me. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that could be one advice to some, some people. <laughs> Well, that's actually useful. That's useful. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Danny is in the queue, and then Katrina also wants to speak. Yeah. Is it okay now? Can yeah. I? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this, but on social media like Facebook and Twitter, there's this thing going around like a Twitter thread like, that's become a Facebook thread. Um, Friends who go to therapy. Friends who go to therapy. Tell me what. Tell me some. Ter tell me some advice your therapist gave you. So, uh, because I can't go to therapy. Like, how do you? Um, what's your take on these like secondhand therapy sessions that are happening like over the internet? Because, I mean, consider considering that again, therapy costs money, and not everybody has the has the means to do that. So, um, some people go go to these like. Uh, go to the internet and total stra and total strangers who have gone who have gone to therapists and maybe like they can pick they can pick out some advi advice there. So I think that helped some people. It's helped me. Uh, it has helped me once in a while. Uh, I've seen some I've seen some sound advice that I've also passed on to friends, which has also helped them. But what's the professional verdict on this? Okay, uh, I just wanted to add as well, there are some comics out there, like for example, Mardu, where she does, she, she sort of documents her therapy sessions with her therapist and like shows this advice to a lot of people. And it, it, it helps to be, to feel validated as well, that you get these feelings too. This happens all the time. Yes, um, anyone want to answer the question? Well, confidentiality issue. Mm. But if it's something that, um, well, it depends on their ano, eh, um, agreement. So if the therapist agrees and if the client agrees, okay. But I, and, and based on what she shared, yung, yung secondhand therapy, well, if it helps the person, as long as that person don't identify and over-pathologize nga yung, um, yung symptoms that they encountered, that's okay. But I, I'm only concerned with the idea that um, yung possibility of, of yung overlook yung specific symptoms or yung specific uh, problem, no? So that uh, yung issue done is that um, there will be possible relapse um, dun sa person na yun. So yun lang yung problem. So maybe there are short-term benefits, but yung long-term benefit, yun lang yung issue natin. So yun. Thank you. Bea? Um, <clears throat> I think I, I like, I think this is a great question. Uh, I've seen some of those threads also. Um, I think that there can be value in it, especially mm -hmm. when people are sharing um, mm -hmm. like big, like, ano ba, parang general insights um, yes. or ways of looking at uh, maybe ways that you can sort of shift the way that you think about things. Mm -hmm. um, but similar to Rian, um, maybe one concern would be that um, uh, a, prof a mental health professional might say something to their client who has a specific concern. 
Uh, maybe the, the client has a specific pattern of thoughts, uh, of feelings that the, the therapist wanted to address. Um, and you, the, the, the advice might help for that client and their concerns and their issues. Um, but it might not be as applicable for other people. Um, so parang there always has to be that caveat na uh, the things that are said in therapy may not be parang general population yes. advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might be, and they should be actually tailored to the individual. Um, kasi parang why would you go to uh, one-on-one sessions with a therapist to, to receive advice that would work for everyone? So, yeah. um, I think as long and, as that is mm-hmm. clear, uh, mm-hmm. that I, I I think that would be okay. And also, when it comes to diagnosing the person kasi and creating um, effective intervention, there are times when um, they are also asked to ano, to take um, psychological exams. So, yun, very specific and tailored fit talaga yung intervention. So, if it's second-hand, diba, there's no psychological tools na uh, gagamitin ng another individual. Diba? So, yun. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're running out of time. So, Katrina and Feyan, could you ask your question and then let's answer it after. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll try to keep it brief also because my internet is so terrible. I could drop out at any time. But, um, well, I won't say her name. It's probable some of you know her. But I don't know if she's okay with me talking about this. So I won't say her name. But I have a friend. She's an old friend. And she's not like a psychologist. But I know she's not completely inexperienced. She's got, I mean, she used to uh, ther- do therapy in prisons, in Montelupa, whatever. Anyway... Uh, so she's got some knowledge. Anyway, uh, since the pandemic, a lot of athletes have oh. been having mental health issues because, you know, all their games have been postponed indefinitely, uh, mm-hmm. etc. So she had this therapy group that uh, the people who attended it in the very beginning were all elite athletes, like Philippine Olympic athletes, etc. And uh, coaches as well. And then eventually, uh, the, their individual teams took care of them now. For example, if they have a basketball team, siguro that basketball team has their own therapist. So they would leave her group. So eventually, she opened up the group to other people. And I found out about it from her. So she does it three times a week in the morning. And uh, at first, I wasn't joining because I thought, I'm okay. I mean, it would be fun to listen, but I work. I work, you know, like... 100% I work from home so I didn't join but then a friend of mine joined and she said it was helping her because she was getting anx- very anxious about the pandemic and then after several months long story short I realized that I was not as okay as I thought I was uh, even though mentally emotionally I really feel all right it was manifesting in a physical way which I didn't expect but it did so when my friend said that uh, these thrice a week sessions were helping her, I said, well, why not? It's just a bunch of people talking. I even know some of them, like the therapist. I don't know what to call her. I guess I can say therapist. Therapist herself and a couple of friends join it as well. So I started joining uh, in the morning. Like sometimes I'm actually clocked in, but I'm actually in the session. Mm-hmm. And it helped because even though she may... Uh, it's, it's part of a guided conversation. That's what she calls it. And I think that's a good way to call it because it's more a way for a bunch of people to talk, some of whom don't know each other at all, some of whom do know each other. And then the therapist kind of just guides it. Like there's a topic for each day. And we even agree on what the topic will be for the next one. So like on Monday, at the end of it, we say, okay, what will we talk about on Wednesday? And usually it's based on something kind of scientific, you know, like a particular syndrome or uh, a particular issue, you know, like it's not always pandemic related, but it might be something like, for example, somehow the imposter syndrome got brought up. So one day mm-hmm. with imposter syndrome, which is not really related to the pandemic. Another time it was um, about winning because now some of the athletes are still there. The ones who don't have teams or support, there are still some athletes and coaches in the group. So it was about when is winning not really winning or when is something that feels like Sorry, losing actually uh, winning. Katrina? Yeah. 
Katrina, can yes. you keep this short? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, all to say, sorry, all to say that it helps. You know, even though she's not a licensed therapist and just talking to people who are not necessarily people you know, it's been helping a lot. And I've been doing it now three times a week. So there. Hmm. Okay. Very good. Then can, well, then nice. when I can say something if I can. Okay, hold on. Uh, let, let's let let yeah. Feyan speak first and then let's finish this topic. Thank you, Feyan. No, 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 no. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. So this question is from both of us. Um, we just want, we were, we wanted to ask about mental health resources specifically for men because um, I think um, men, because men don't really know how to talk about their emotions with their friends the way that we women do. It takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're not really used to it. So I feel like maybe as women, we, we get some sort of extra emotional support from our friends, but usually men don't have that support network, so. Also, I'm not really happy that like, you know, it's just you have to go through emotional baggage. And it's like, you know, it's always talk to women. It's like, they're not, they're not really designated to be our like tricks or anything, so. <laughs> or, and I feel bad every time I vent, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Like I, but I don't have, I'm not sure what other options I have. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, um, as a partner, you know, I'm, I'm okay to give emotional support to my, to my partner. Um, but I feel that, you know, men also need to talk to each other. They just don't know how. So that was, that's what my question is about. Thank you. Uh, we can actually do that in the group. So if you join the support, secular support group, like we can tackle men's, mental health uh, stuff as well. Uh, Dr. Margie? Oh, I just wanted to say with the previous conversation, and first, this one, I think it's terrific if you can have a men's group. I see how people respond to it because I think what uh, the previous speaker said makes perfect sense, you know, that always this is talked about. Kawawa naman the guys. I mean, the guys who are sincere because we know there are a lot of guys out there, as there are women too. But anyway, kawawa naman the guys, they never have a chance like to get together and really speak about their emotions. So then I hope that you and Red and whoever else will be able to start a group like this and see where it goes. But what I was going to say is what Katrina said and earlier Dina, the ways you find uh, support, the way that's Jeremy, the ways you find support, um, I, even if it's not in quotes a professional psychologist, psychiatrist, I think that's terrific. So as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And when you eat the support and it tastes good and you know that this is going to fill you not only today but tomorrow and the day after, to cook, then that's wonderful. Because I think was that Danny, was that Danny Hill or Danny Hill? I don't know. Anyway, what she was saying, yeah, as you said, you have to make sure that the things you pick up are things that are for you because some things will only be for the, the person who is actually speaking to the professional. But if you know how to pick out things that will be helpful to you, that's terrific and do it. Anyway, that's all I was going to say. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, one more thing, sorry. And yes. this is way, way back about the peer counseling. Oh, counseling your friend but i'll tell you it's difficult because it's a friend you're all you're expected almost to be biased of course you're for your friend whatever she did even if it was the win more but if your friend expects you to be the friend wants you could worry to be a therapist but she really expects you to be your friend you know so you have to be objective well I don't think really, it, you know, it doesn't seem like a good way to mm -hmm. increase your credibility if you pull the hair of someone who criticized you. As a therapist, you might say that, but as your friend, you'll say, I'm sure she deserved it or whatever. You know, so mahirap rin maging kung kaibigan mo yon. It's so hard to be a therapist dun sa kaibigan mo. Yes. So, you cannot be objective. You will either be a terrible friend or a terrible psychologist, you know. Anyway, that's all. 
Thanks. I just wanted to share the advice then. Uh, well, not everyone has to always uh, require that of friends. They have to be always just supportive or biased, diba? So, so we can also let our friends know that, that we, uh, we appreciate genuine advice and, and what they actually think. Um, for me, when I, when I give advice to friends, especially if it's something that I think they don't want to hear, I always accompany it with kinder words. And I always reassure them that I love them, that I love them as a friend, they have value, things like that. So assurances uh, can go a long way with friends as well. Um, can we end this so that we can start with our raunchy topic, last topic for the day? Uh, can you have sex if you're unhappy? So I will give a poll. Are you able to have sex if you're in an unhappy place, if you're in an unhappy, unhappy state of mind? Are you able to have sex? I imagine this discussion will be super interesting to Doc Margie. It's kind of like a two-pronged column uh, sort of discussion. Okay. Uh, I'll end the polling and share the results. So, yeah, there are 61% yes and 17% no and 22% undecided. Who wants to share first for yes? <laughs> oh, you're so fast. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have sex even if you're unhappy. The question is, is, is it going to be good sex? Okay. The can you actually thing, finish you know? sex if you're unhappy? I mean, you can have sex, but can you actually have good, satisfying, healthy sex is the question. From experience, yes, you can have sex. Good, satisfying, healthy sex, maybe not. Like you end up just like feeling disgusted of yourself. <laughs> so if if you know that that's gonna happen, are you still interested in having sex? I don't know. Sometimes you sometimes you just want to scratch an itch and see if it works. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, anyone else? Oh, fan. Okay. What's your What's your answer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to do the same thing that you are feeling the whole time. So, I mean, even just cracking it out or something, <laughs> you will, to, just to get you out of that funk. Like, yeah. Do it. My, Not like we do, but. <laughs> <laughs> my my answer is um, um, yes, but it depends also on what kind of unhappy. Like for me, it's like if I'm angry, yes, but if I'm sad, no. Hmm. That's an interesting point, Faye, and it's kind of like you're bringing the rest of the cast of Inside Out. So it's usually happy sex, but sometimes sad sex or angry sex gets to do their thing too. So for some... <laughs> yeah. Who's next? Is... Joy shared that she had a psych evil a long time ago and Ka showed that she's one of those who seek out sex when distressed. Katrina, Katrina wants to share something too. Yes, Katrina. Oh, you're muted. You should unmute Katrina. Okay, I just wanted to make an analogy. Okay, to keep it brief, I'll just make an analogy. You know how there's stress eating, like you feel down or angry or sad, whatever. And so you eat something yummy, like a dessert or, or a steak or whatever it is that makes you happy. And it does help, right? Like comfort food. So I see sex the same way. I mean, I can't, I don't see why when I'm depressed or angry or whatever, I can't use sex the way I might eat a really good slice of cake. And it makes me feel better afterward. Like I ate a really good slice of cake. As long as the other, as, as long as it's consensual, of course. No? So there, that's just my analogy to me. Like good sex can work like a really good meal to make me feel better there. Thank you. Oh, where did Red go? Okay. Um, anyone else want to share? 
Is there anyone who cannot have sex while they're unhappy? Parang wala. Wow. Galing ninyo. <laughs> Ayan. Joseph and Danny. Joseph, do you want to go first? Uh, how do you how do you unmute? There, you're unmuted. unmuted. You're unmuted. Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize earlier. Um, I was listening, but then it suddenly rained. So I was unable to answer Miss Bea's question because I had to get the dogs inside. But they're fine now. Um, regarding the question, can you all hear me? Yes. Uh, regarding the question, yes, you can do it. Uh, you can have sex when you're in a bad mood. But whether I feel it personally, the end result, whether it will be good afterwards depends yes on the what kind of unpleasantness it was if you were if you will do it with a trusted person because as a form of stress relief because you're stressed at work then it can end up good but if you're going to do it with a person you hate because i don't know complicated issues then it might end up even if it ends up physically pleasurable it might end up you might be confused and distressed afterwards oh and big shout out thank you to all the speakers and Nice to be in F in an FF meeting again. I think the last time I was here was 2008, but I followed the page. Welcome back. Uh, Danny? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm undecided about this because um, as the previous speaker said, it sort of, for me, it sort of depends on exactly what kind of unhappiness I, um, I'm in because like if I'm uh stressed out i find that i really don't want anybody near my body and i just like want to be be a her be a hermit because that's how i deal with stress but if it's like for a, an, a different kind of unhappiness like say for example grief like i was sad about a friend's passing and then have the, uh and then having sex with somebody who I trusted and who w was able to com who was able to comfort me that comforted that comforted me uh, sex became like comfortable uh, like a comfortable thing like parang atahan na sort of thing so i so i'm not i'm not sure i'm not sure what kind of an what kind of unhappiness that would be but definitely if it's a stress level type uh, but if it's a stressful type of unhappiness the answer is no but for some kinds of unhappiness the answer is yeah the answer is yes it's all up in the air so yeah difficult thank you red do you have anything else to say it's already 609 thanks for staying everyone and thank uh you for our uh, mental health experts? No matter what I'm feeling, if the sex is with Din. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, anyway, thank you so much again. Some of the speakers, already, or all of them left already, yeah? Uh, Bea is still here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there it is. There. Next page. Thank you again to all of our speakers. Thank you, Bea. Thank you, Chris, Rian, and Doc Margie, and ev all of you for sharing and uh, giving your insights and, and this kind of support. We need more of this, certainly. It will be a new focus of Filipino free thinkers to do more constructive and supportive things like this. We can't be all too debatey all the time. I mean, we can't be just that. I think it, it would be nice if we have uh, add a supportive side. So please support our maiden effort in that uh, direction. The secular support group in Facebook is where. Oh we wait! Such I will share my screen. Yeah. And um, on that note, it was mentioned earlier. We did a first men's meetup. Uh, the follow-up to that will happen very soon. You'll of course hear about that on our various channels. If you aren't subscribed to our mailing list yet, please do so. Um, Tin, thank you so much. Uh, any last words before we close this? Um, yeah, so please join the group and share any tips. If, you're, if you are going to therapy, share your uh, therapists as well. Um, also, subscribe to our newsletter so that you can be updated for upcoming events and uh, meetups. FilipinoFreeThinkers.org slash subscribe. 
Thanks, everyone. That's it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Uh, yep.